Are you expecting to hear some cheers this Friday night? It's actually the third time I did the IMAF. So I fought three times in Vegas. And then my last fight in New York. And then this is, uh, yeah, like my fifth fight here. But I don't know. I hope so. I hope there's some Irish in the, in the crowd. I um do you believe that a win over cat well in September or the end of summer I've heard, yeah. I heard this fight was meant to be for the title and then I don't know what happened, but I'm here fighting cats, so I'm excited. Uh next question. Uh did you or your coaches bring in any special sparring partners to emulate her style? Yeah, I have um I was working with some of the uh T V G B wrestlers. Um prepare for this type of matchup. I know Kat is obviously very strong in wrestling and grappling and quite similar to my style, but she favors more towards wrestling. So it was nice to kind of add that aspect into my game. Um I think one of my strongest points has always been my take on defense and it's just just kind of really honed in on that during this camp. I also have a fantastic sparring partner, a guy called Jake, um he's black belt judo high level wrestler. So it's been a lot of heavy wrestling this camp, yeah. Leah, right here. Being that the uh, Irish fight culture is so strong, what does it mean to you to be able to represent Ireland out here in California this week? Yeah, I'm really proud. You know, we've always had massive shows in Dublin, and I think you know, it's more special. I think, you know, I'm from Belfast, and we've had so many iconic male fighters coming from Belfast. You know, Carl Frampton, McConnell, we've got the likes of Carl Moore as well, now in Bellator. It's nice to just represent you know, Belfast and, and where I grew up and, and both sides of the border. Awesome. Thank you. Leah, you come to California and it's raining. Did you bring this from Ireland? Yeah, and a tornado. Did you hear, like, the day I arrived last week, there was a tornado in California. Like, the <laughs> first one in 30 years. The curse has arrived. <laughs> That's what the nickname is from. Yeah. And if it goes wrong, it'll happen to me. <laughs> you got Kat Zingano in front of you. She's beaten, you know, a lot, a lot of top talent, obviously. Amanda Nunes, Misha Tate, Raquel Pennington. What does that mean to you to have that that name in front of you, this opportunity to get a win over Kat Zingano? Yeah, I think you know, Mike had mentioned this name back in November, and I um I've been the most excited I've been for a matchup. I've always been a fan of hers and the way she fights. And you know, I, I I like her as a person. I think just to be able to have this opportunity and get to this point, I'm, I'm proud of myself and I'm I'm excited to showcase, you know, my skill and on Friday. I think you know, beating her will take I believe to be the best version of myself. And I feel like we've really brought that out of me this camp. I've known Daniel James for like 10 years now, so it's so cool that he's the headliner. But I got to think, Leah McCourt versus Kat Zingano could have headlined this thing. Who's asked you got a kick to headline this card? I, I heard it was as well. I don't care. It doesn't really make a difference. If you're first, I'd rather be first on to get it over and done with. But as always, I'm always the main card or co-main event. It's always a lot of pressure and you've thrown it at the deep end. It's like, this is what I've done my whole career since my first professional debut. It's thrown it at the deep end and here we are again. You're a black belt in judo. You've got nice triangles, nice finishes. Do you prefer to keep this fight on the feet or if it goes to the floor, are you confident that you're going to be able to deal with the cats and Gano on the mat? Yeah. You know, we have our, our, we have our game plan and our strategy and we have you know, the, the best keys to victory that we feel that we're going to implement in this, in this fight. But you know, I'm comfortable everywhere. If it's standing or, or grappling, you know, grappling's my game. And it's like, if it, if it goes to that, then I'll be able to hang there. Yeah. How does Leah McCourt win this fight? Uh, I feel like it's going to be, could be a second round stoppage. We'll take a couple from the internet. Here's Santiago. Hi, Leah. Thank you for the time. You look amazing as always. And uh, how is fight week going for you? And did you get a good reception from Bellator upon arrival? Always. Bells were the best. Yeah. Uh, it's been good. We came out a bit early just to get used to the time difference and the jet lag. So it's been nice and a bit calmer than Dublin fight week. So we've all had a good time by the pool and just chilling. Yeah. I saw that you also was with Luke Trainer earlier during the photo shoot, and I saw that you brought Molly McMahon with you. Is Molly going to be in your corner? And how long have you been working with her now? Yeah, I know Luke, obviously, and his dad, he's in Bellator, he's great. It's good to have some of the English out here. And Molly and I have been friends for like seven years, so I've always had her, you know, she's always had my back. She's in my corner, and 
We're keeping me laughing this week as well. So good. Patrick. Hi, Leah. This is Pat McCoy from Combat Sports UK. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. You know, Irish MMA recently has really been thriving through all different promotions. And how good does it feel to be one of the front runners among that Irish talent? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely proud. You know, I um, love representing Ireland and love coming from that kind of fighting country. And there's so many great Irish fighters and all the across all the promotions and divisions at the minute. It's nice to, to just to be up here and represent them as well. Mills. How's it going, Leah? MMA Locker Room, part of Puss Force Radio. Hi. I just have a question. Uh, it seems like you've been enjoying your time out there on the mic, commentating a lot of these uh, fighters out there that you've been uh, actually studying. Since you've been behind the booth studying them from a commentator's perspective, have you had that uh, luxury to study Kat Sagano behind the mic at the booth? Um, Not behind the mic. Uh, I, I'm a bit of a nerd. I kind of like study fighting anyway and especially when we had this kind of matchup we've had a lot of breakdowns done and you know I've seen her fights I know what way she fights and I know her style so I feel like it's quite it's an advantage I have I know what you know, the strongest ways to win and how to you know make this fight go in my favor got it and for the people out there you got any predictions on how this fight's going to play out a lot of people say when you go into the fight with the specific game plan it's usually better to have you know the results that you have that you want with the specific game plan so how do you see this fight playing out um you know we prepared for all scenarios we're prepared for you know a lot of different the fights to go a lot of different ways and i think that uh i'll be you know in the last couple of fights have shown i can i can stand and i can i can grapple as well so you know, as long as i stick to leave skill and technique and time and will you know i think it's gonna be a fight of who gives the first inch, who's going to, you know, give up in that scramble first, who's going to uh, settle in a bad position. I think it's going to come a lot to, down to a lot to mindset. And I think both of us have shown we, we have been to deep waters and can get through that in the fight. And I think that's what's going to make it exciting on Friday. You know, we're not going to give up. Danny? Leah, what, what implications do you think this fight has? Uh, you know, I know a win is going to, you know, uh, a title shot so it's, it's massive implications is you know massive opportunities to come from it i think that it's motivated me even more in training i always you know give 110 percent to the fight camps and never take these opportunities for for granted and give everything i can so you know i've i've done everything i can and it's just it's time to go and perform yeah when you know there's some there's a lot on the line does this motivate you does it up the nerves what effects does it ha does it have on you just feel like every fight I've had, there's been a lot on the line. There's been a lot of, you know, opportunities after. I have to to keep winning to keep getting these big fights, and it's like, you know, I'm used to it now. I'm I've always had these kind of big events and big, uh, platforms to, to fight on. It's kind of been quite good to have that experience. I think you know, whenever I'm here fighting an opponent like Kat, it's better to have you've know, been through this a lot a lot of times and not um, you know, thrown into all the media and the uh pressure. But I'm I'm used to dealing with the pressure fight week. And obviously, this is an opponent that will get you um, a title shot, right? But but beyond that, right? This is also Kat Singano, a historic figure in women's MMA. She's you know fought for a UFC title. She's been in some big fights. How nice is it to add somebody that uh, has so much history? How nice is it to be matched up with somebody that 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 has that name and and be able to put that in your resume? Yeah, you know it's it's amazing. I was watching Kat before I even started fighting MMA so to be able to get to this stage and you know, she's still fighting and it's just I'm definitely proud to be in this position and uh, yeah it's like it's quite unbelievable sometimes when I think about it but at the end of the day just another body another opponent and, and I have to go in there and get the job done. I take our last question here from Sean. Hi Leah, Sean Sheen here for Severe MMA. We spoke a few years ago and you said the phrase to me, you want to fight until your idols become your rivals. And the next two fights for you could be Kat Zingano and Chris Cyborg. Like, how massive is that for you to have reached that level? Have you got Storm Aziz doing my walkout yet, Sean, in Belfast? No, I'm still working on it. Hopefully, when you, uh, the next question I was, I was like, do you want the title shot in Dublin? So maybe for then in September, we can get that You're done. You're going to have to sing Blinded by Your Grace if you don't get him, okay? No, I'll do it. No problem. Give me a mic. I'll do it. <laughs> no, I know. It's like surreal, isn't it? Like you're looking back and fighting the Ulster Hall in Belfast and all the IMAF shows and 
yeah, it's a bit surreal when I think about it. Them out here fighting for these names and these big opportunities that can come. I saw Chris Ivor uh, saying this week that, you know, maybe for the first time ever that she's up for fighting in Dublin. Obviously, the September show is coming back. Is that your aim now to win this, get Cyborg in that show in Dublin? Do you know what? I keep saying Belfast. Like, I, I want to fight in Belfast. I want to fight for the title in Belfast. That's that's where I'm from. And there's so, been so many iconic fight nights there. Um, I just believe that I deserve that. You know, I, I get through this fight. I think you, she said that as well. Like, uh, so hopefully that's what's going to happen. Mike Cogan's promised me that as well. If I ever fight for the title, it's in Belfast. So. Uh, last question for me is, and I, I know someone asked you about the, the grappling earlier on, but I think, you know, Chris mentioned in the interview she did as well with, uh, with James Lynch during the week that she thought your striking could do well against uh, Kat. But, like, Kat has been wrestling an awful lot recently in her fights, and obviously you came up as a judoka, and you're, we all know how good your jiu-jitsu is and everything like that. How good is it, first of all, to hear Cyborg saying those good things about you, but also, like, that... How good is it to, to have someone against you who possibly will want to wrestle and take the fight to the ground where you've been known as someone who people try to avoid getting to the ground? So how good is it to, to you maybe go in there against someone who'd want to take you down? Yeah, it's sort of different. I don't actually think I've ever fought a grappler. I don't think I've I don't actually think I've ever been taken down in a fight. So one of my I always think one of my strongest um attributes is my takedown defense. You know, I've when I started MMA, obviously with like Joe McCogan. Carl Moore did a lot of wrestling, you know, I had to survive in those rounds years ago and I think it stood by me for years and years. So it'd be interesting to see you know, how, how that plays out in the cage and what happens. Um, you know, I put, put myself in a lot of bad positions you know, in this training camp and I'm used to, you know, getting taken down, getting back up. It's just, um, it's going to be a nice test and it'll bring out a new side to me, I think, on Friday. Thanks very much, Leah. Appreciate your time. We'll be joined next by Luke Trainer. First question for Luke. I got more coming. I only had. He's good. Yep, we're now joined by Luke Trainer. First question, Dylan. What's up, Luke? Good to see you back. Uh, you're fighting one of Bellator's biggest hype trains, a top prospect in the organization. I'm sure you know that. Uh, will it feel sweeter? Will victory feel sweeter to derail a hype train like Sullivan Collie? Will it feel? Will victory feel a little bit better taking someone's O off the record? Uh, I'm not focused on the hype. The, all the whole hype train and all that sort of jazz. I think uh, the media builds that and that's great and, and that's, uh, that's good for him. But yeah, I'm focused on me, man. So get the W. Um, that's all I care about. It could be against anyone. It is what it is. The fight's the fight. So uh, yeah. Sullivan Colley has finished all of his opponents as a professional in the first round. You finish fights as well. Is this going down in the first round? Yeah, I think I've got five first round five first round finishes uh, and one second round finish. And yeah, I needed like 10 seconds in the Bahati fight and I would have got him out in the, uh, in the first round too. So yeah, that's nothing new, man. And that's what happens. You're supposed to finish fights in the first round. If you're good, especially when you start, you start to, you start and you fight, uh, you know, lesser opponents and you build and blah, blah, blah. And that's what he done. That's what he's done. That's what everyone does. So I'm not surprised about that. Um, so uh, yeah, it's nothing new, man. And he's a light heavyweight. Do you know what I'm saying? Like we're supposed to get the get the easier guys out in the first. If you don't, then it's not a good sign. Luke, right here. Um, so with a big win here coming on Friday night, uh, going in deeper into 2023, what would you like to see coming coming to your into your way? Yeah, I'm. Uh, when I say this, I'm not looking past uh, Sully at all. I'm uh, fully focused on this fight fully ready for a dogfight for a war. Um, but once I get this win, I'm going back to the UK. I want to rematch Biong, um, take his head off, and then uh, and then I get to re-sign with Bellator after that, make some real money, uh, and just carry on, man. But yeah, that's the, that's the plan.
And last, last but not least, let me ask you this. How was the training camp? How, how'd you feel the past couple months and uh, how did everything go in the gym leading up to this week? Yeah, very good, man. Very good. It's, uh, it's been a very testing camp. I've had a lot of stuff go on personally in this one. Um, it's going to make the victory even more sweet. But uh, yeah, the camp's been hard. Life's been hard for the past three, three months for myself and my family. And this is going to be, it's going to be a nice release, man, to get out all of my demons. But, uh, yeah, I'm ready. Hey, Luke, uh, for those who don't know, what is your favorite food? Bloody hell, that's a tough one. All these other ones are easy. Uh, something sweet, man, something sweet. I don't know. Let's go for a Krispy Kreme donut with like some ice cream and extra whipped cream. I always... Uh, or you got Chinese, brother. Chinese takeaway in England's good too. Um, and then you got pizza as well. Bro, how long have we got? Something like that. Yeah, something like that. We'll do a couple from the internet here. Patrick? Hey, Luke. This is Pat McCoy from Combat Sports. Okay, how are you doing today? What's happening, brother? I'm good, thank you. I'm doing well. Obviously, this is your U.S. debut. How, how have you adjusted to the time difference? You know, when did you get to California? So I flew into San Diego on my own on Friday uh, so I could have a few extra days to acclimatize. Um, I'm 100% acclimatized now. I'm going to bed at around 11, 12 o'clock. I'm waking up at around 8, 9 o'clock. My pops just got in a couple of days ago and he's still like waking up at 3 in the morning, <laughs> sneaking around, trying not to wake me up. But uh, yeah, man, I'm acclimatized. Uh, I love it here. I love fighting in California. This is beautiful to have some sunshine in my life. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, my body and mind is fully ready to go, man. Aaron? Hey, Luke, this is Aaron East from MMA UK News, man. I hope you're doing well. What's happening, brother? All right, man. Well, um, just, just double question here. How regularly would you like to be fighting this year? And are there any cards you have your eye on at all? I want four. I want four fights. I've kept it a secret from my missus that you guys have a Bellator in Hawaii. Um, she's going to be very upset when she sees that. Uh, I think it's going to be too short a notice to take. I think it's in April. Um, but yeah, I want three or four fights. I want to I wanna really make some money this year. I've got some big plans outside of MMA and I want to start that rolling this year. So I need the funds behind me. Um, but yeah, other than that, I want to be active, man. I think now the Bellator is fully rolling and they seem to be wanting to roll with me. Um, yeah, let's go. Whether it's in the States, whether it's in flipping Italy or the North Pole, I don't care. Just get me fighting and uh, let's make some money and take some scalps, man. I'm ready to go. Santiago. Hi, Luke. Hello from Amsterdam and thank you for the time. My Bellator man, post. what's that? Santiago, <laughs> I recognize your voice from my first fight in uh, Italy, right? Yeah, and we spoke oh, also uh, after after your last fight uh, in Italy in last year. That was also nice. Congratulations with that one as well. And look, I wanted to ask you about Bellator posted a clip of you talking about being important for other people and about your bigger picture plan. How proud are you to be able to do that on this big Bellator platform? Yeah, it's great. It's great. I'm representing... Uh the fostering network for this fight as my last. Um, I've had a bunch of people reach out to me since they posted that video yesterday um, about fostering, telling me whether they've been fostered or uh, they're thinking about fostering. Um, it's a beautiful thing when I can encourage people to get involved. It doesn't, ha it doesn't mean you have to be a foster carer. If you have a skill, any life skill that you can offer to children who need nothing but love and guidance, then do it. Um, so yeah, it's it's become a beautiful thing that that's now my message. I haven't tried to get that across. Like I, I've just spoke about my life, and then it's better to have kind of done their media stuff, and and they've they've turned it into they've turned it into this massive thing. And I love them for that, man. It's uh, they've put so many eyeballs onto it. So I'm just glad I can hold the torch. And uh, all respect to everyone in the care system, all the children out there struggling. You know, I'm here for you and uh, all the kids back home. I'm coming back very soon. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I love Bellator for doing that. Last one here, Darren. Thank you for your time, Luke. When you win a big fight, like you're going to win very soon, what does the celebration look like? And how long do you take off in your personal life from fighting like that? So, uh, like I said previously, I've got a lot of personal things going on right now with my family. and. Uh, once, once I get this W, um, I'm taking some time to really spend some time with them. It's taking, obviously, like everyone else, it's 
This, this camp has taken me away from my family. I travel about six hours a day for my two to three training sessions. So I'm basically out the house from seven o'clock. I get back at about 11 o'clock and I get to see my family on a Sunday. So I need to spend some time with them. We're, we're celebrating in California for a little bit, but we need to, uh, we need to be together now more than anything. So, um, I'm taking some time off celebrating with them and then, uh, I'll be back within about a week, but it'll be light training. And then two weeks after that, I'm back in the mix. I'm ready to go again. But um, yeah, that time off for me for this one's going to be super important for me and my family. Appreciate the time, Luke. Thank you, brother. Oh, is that it? Oh, perfect. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Be joined next by Maria Henderson. Hello. All right. We're now being joined by Maria Henderson. Bill? What's up, Maria? Over here. Oh. First professional Bellator fight week. How are you feeling? Great. I'm super grateful to be here. I'm excited to be with the Bellator team. You're fighting one Mackenzie Stiller. She's a 4-0 amateur for submissions. What else do you know about her? What makes her a good stylistic matchup for yourself? I don't really know much about her because all her film is pretty short. She goes in, she takes the girls down or tosses them pretty much, and then she submits them. Besides for that... I don't really know much about her, but I know it's going to be an interesting matchup style because she comes straight forward. And I obviously don't mind going straight forward either, whether it's with our hands or in the clinch. I think I'm pretty good in the clinch and I like the clinch a lot. So we'll see. I assume this guy is going to be in your corner on Friday night. Who else is going to join Benson? Uh, John Crouch, the head MMA coach at the MMA lab. And then uh, Jack Eglin, he fights for cage warriors. Okay. I have a crazy question for you real quick. Yeah. I don't know too much about your childhood or your life growing up, but since you're making your pro Bellator debut, I got to ask you this. Did you ever imagine as a young girl that your career, your entire life would revolve around MMA or cage fighting? Now your twin sister is basically running an MMA promotion herself, married to Mr. Benson Henderson right here. Was this lifestyle always in the cards for you? No, I don't think so. You know, I, as a little girl, I always wanted to do sports and stuff. And I always thought it'd be awesome and amazing to be a great athlete, but we never had the money to do any sports. And we grew up pretty four. There was five of us and we grew up on like social security checks and access. So we didn't have much money to do sports. So when I got the opportunity to do jujitsu, jiu it was amazing. And I knew I wanted to compete and I did really well there and kind of just fell, fell into my lap. Your husband's had one of the most incredible mixed martial arts careers we've ever seen. It was the end of his recently. Now it's the beginning of your pro career. What have the vibes been like this training camp? A lot of uh, attention going on to your husband. Has, has, has you, are you finally getting the attention on you today? Uh, I don't really care about attention, <laughs> but yeah, I guess so. Everyone comes up to him and they're like, oh, what's next? What's next? Talking to him, telling him things. He's like, oh, I'm not the fighter. She's the fighter. So he keeps putting a lot of the attention on me. Uh, but it's training camp camps have been obviously the, his retirement was kind of surprised us, but, uh, uh, it's been good. You know, we work well together. Neither one of us seem to want the attention too much. And so I think that works well. We're never trying to take it from each other or jealous of the other one. We're just more pushing each other up, 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 up. So it's been great. It's been like usual for us. Maria right here. So as this is your first Bellator professional fight, uh, what does it mean to you to have the opportunity to carry on the Henderson legacy inside the MMA cage? It's great. Um, my husband worked his butt off and did everything. Did He gave us a great life. We have everything we could wish for. Our kids are taken care of. And I just want to show him that I'm grateful for the opportunities he's given me. You know, a lot of people can't go chase their dreams because they don't have the opportunities or they don't have the um, lifestyle to do it. And my husband's given me that opportunity and he's 
he didn't have to step away from MMA, but he did. So I could start my career, you know, and so that's really grateful. I'm really grateful for that. And it means a lot. And I'm really proud of my last name. I'm proud of the work my husband's put in and I'm ready to carry um, a new legacy to the Henderson name. Awesome. And last question for you. I saw your impressive uh, submission victory back in July. How did that win help prepare you for this for this debut? Jiu-jitsu is kind of my thing. That that submission is something I've done for a long time. So as far as uh, preparing me, I was a little surprised that the girl wanted to clinch up right away. But, um, you know, it, it was good for me. You know, she clinched up from off of a kick and uh, that surprised me. And I was like, oh, wow, I did not think we were going to be here. So I think for this fight, it's actually great because I think the girl I'm fighting now likes to clinch and she obviously wants a judo toss. She's a judo black belt. So it prepared me a lot. LFA is a great promotion and um, I'm just happy to be with the Bellator team. It's it's exciting to be with the Bellator team. Everyone's a family here. Everyone appreciates the fighters. You know, they don't try to outshine the fighters with talking big and talking disrespectful about the fighters. They They love the fighters. They know the work that gets put into it. And if you guys know the Bellator team, most of them have some sort of martial arts background. So they all appreciate it a lot and I'm really excited to be here. Hi, I've known you for many years and I've known your husband for many years. I just wanted to ask you, are you gonna do any kind of special jujitsu move? Or are you gonna just keep it up and just box it out or? Oh, I think it's hard to say what you're gonna do in a fight, you never know. And if you go forward just planning for one exact thing and that doesn't happen, you might kind of psych yourself out, I guess. But no, no, nothing special. There are a few things I've worked on, um, to like a tra some transition things that would be super cool to get. But uh, just kind of see where I get, where the ground takes me or even on the feet, I, I would like to display uh, my stand up a little bit more. I don't know if I'm going to get the opportunity in this fight because uh, like I said, she's a judo girl. So the clinch is kind of where she wants to be. Um, but I would like to display more of that and maybe finish her there. Last question. Um, now that you're the main person in the family, is he doing all the the domestic uh, duties now at the household? He sold himself short. He's a great dad. He's a great husband. Like I almost never touch the laundry. Ben always does the laundry. Uh, he washes the dishes. Even when he was fighting, even in camps, um, we had several times where he was in camp, but we just had a baby. So he was up all night with one baby. There was like three camps. He was up all night with one baby where... I was nursing the other baby. So he sold himself short. He is doing more now with the kids, but he's a great dad. He's always there with the kids. He's the one who's always throwing them up in the air or dangling them from the sheets from our banister. Or, you know, he, he always does that stuff. So life's pretty much the same as far as that goes. It's just now I'm getting more time in the gym. Danny. Maria, uh, Benson was uh, pretty clear and adamant that you are the focus now. You are the star. Um, what does it mean to have your husband support in, in that manner? Um, because he's really, he really wants to push you as far as you can possibly go in this career. It's great. Every wife wants a husband who supports her. And I don't think a lot of them get that. I think uh, sometimes husbands are still in that old school role where they're the bread maker. But even when he was the bread maker, he pushed me to be the best I could be. He helped me in jujitsu competitions. He helped me be the best mom I could be. So it means the world to me. I think I have a fantastic husband. He's always supported me. I could decide tomorrow that I don't want to fight anymore. I want to go be a doctor. And he'd be like, all right, let's do it. So it means the world to me. And um, I have a great husband. So I'm always really appreciative of that. And does the last name Henderson, does it add any pressure? Because obviously, I mean, um, a lot of the expectations, are, right? Like you're married to one of the greatest lightweights of all time. Yeah, I think a lot of people expect there to be a lot of pressure, a lot of expectations, but Ben and I are two different people. And in the end, I'm the one who has to put in the hard work and I'm the one who steps into the cage. It's not him. He did his time. He did all his hard work. And the only thing that I think um, that might be pressure is I know how hard it is and I know what it takes. I know the blood, sweat, and tears that it goes into this sport. And so if anything, I want to push myself as hard as my husband pushed himself, if not more because now he's given me his legacy and he's helping me push forward. But I don't think there's really any pressure. It's just, I'm grateful for, to be here. I'm excited to be here. I, I love to do this and that's why I'm doing it. I don't have to do it, but I get to do it and he helped me do it. So no pressure, just excited to show that I could do it now and show all the work that my husband and John Crouch and I've been doing for the last couple of years. Yeah. And, and just super quick, um, this is a straw wave fight, right? Yes. Um, what what's the plan? Because I know that Bellator for the most part has worked with uh, women's featherweight and flatweight. Uh, I don't know. You have to ask them that. I I don't know. Okay. Thank you.
Thanks, Maria. Appreciate it. We'll be joined next by Archie Colgan. All right, we're now being joined by Archie Colgan. Archibald Kwame Colgan the first. How you doing, man? With the fresh cut. Uh, you're now nine fights into this fighting career, six and pro, three and amateur. Uh, have you reached a new level of comfort recently, whether it be during fight week or in the cage? Is it starting to feel like second nature to you? Yeah, I, I think like every fight. I'm finding just like new ounces in myself. Like, like the last fight was my first time making 155. And this time it just feels a little bit more natural, a little bit more easier. Um, and obviously my, my skill set, like through training camps, I'm consistently training. So it's just getting better um, through that process. But man, it's like, I'm just, I'm just getting better at this, like leaps and bounds. You've already defeated one of Longo's top prospects and Dylan, the quiet man, Mantello, who also happens to be fighting this weekend, coincidentally. Now you're set to take on another guy from Long Island, undefeated guy in the form of Justin Montalvo. Do you just have it out for this gym or are you just fighting whoever they put in front of you? <laughs> um, I guess I have it out for gym now. <laughs> no. So, I mean, it's definitely not a gym thing. You know, I don't really care, but I had this fight. I took this fight. Uh, in July, um, on three weeks notice and it, it fell out and I wanted the fight still. So after my last fight, I, I wanted it again and, you know, that was for me to happen. And here we are. Lastly, you're fighting alongside a guy named Bryce Meredith, someone that, you know, pretty well. I was wondering how you guys even know each other, but are you expecting big things from this guy in 2023? Yeah, of course. Um, Bryce is a great competitor. Um, uh, I've known Bryce. We've known each other since probably, you know, 10 years old. You know, since we were little kids and then um coincidentally we ended up going to college together and we you know did some great things together in college wrestling um and we fought on a couple of cards this is our actually our second or third card second card fighting together uh i expect him to go out there and and do the things that you guys expect archie the shirt's looking fresh bro are you trying to top me what's going on i was like man i gotta be the the best dressed in here so so far <laughs> I hate on your guys' fist, but I'm winning. <laughs> I like it. All right, so most of your wins are by finish, yeah. but you're a wrestler. Why are you out here knocking people out, man? It's exciting. It's what you want to see, right? I, I have a little chip on my shoulder from uh, not getting, obviously not finishes like fighting in, in wrestling, but not, not doing dominant performances like I should have in wrestling. Um, so I want to make sure that I can, I, I can start in this career of dominating people um, and being the person that I, I know I should be. So, Archie, a couple minutes ago, you mentioned how you're making leaps and bounds throughout this sport. Talk to me a little bit about how those things are happening and what you believe to be, you know, those those things that are helping you so much at this point in your career. Um, well, I think the biggest thing is is just like consistency, like just even the days that you suck and you don't want to do it. And, and the body's hurting, like, you still got to show up. You got you to gotta get to that workout. 
And then usually about halfway through that workout, after you started it, now you start to feel good. And then you're like, all right, you know, I'm happy I came here. Um, but it's like that first little bit that that sucks. You know, that that car right there, you're trying to, you know, all the excuses that pop in your head, hey, maybe I do need to go get, you know, my car washed. Maybe I do need to go get my license done, you know? And, and all these things start popping in your head. But just like being consistent, being disciplined, showing up, giving it your best, um, and do that day after day after day, practice after practice after practice, four practices a day, three practices a day, week after week. Next thing you know, it leaves bounds better. Awesome. And now that now that you're on this win streak and you're doing so well and you know, having great performances, what would you like to see? You know, we're still early on here in 2023. What would you like to see going down the line into the rest of the year? There's a lot of cards, you know, that are getting booked and uh, a lot of things going on. What do you want to see that this coming year? Um, so for me, I have, uh, my second child is going to be born in May, late May, May 28th, uh, around then. So I still want to get three fights, but it'll just have probably have to be a little bit later in the summertime after this fight, um, July, late July or something or August. And ideally in November or December, if I could get one. So I still want three. Yeah. Archer, real quick, uh, you've had a lot of success, obviously. What do you do to keep from getting complacent and keeping ahead of everybody that's obviously trying to chase you and catch up to you? Um, man, there's a list of things. Like, I, I have the chip on my shoulder, like I said, from wrestling. The way that my career ended in wrestling, it's like, it still sticks with me. Um, I still think about my last performance ever as a wrestling uh, tournament, and it, it's, like, embarrassing. And that chip is on my shoulder, um, so that pushes me every day. And when you when you train alongside guys that like I trained with, um, who are at the top of the world, like you just get to see what, where you're at, where you stand, and what you need to do. And I just have to keep going every day, if I want to get to that position. And I understand that because I get to see it firsthand. Like I get to see where I stand with these guys. These guys get to tell me where I compare to when they were my age, like things like that. And I know it's possible, and I know I'll get there, but. Like I, I get to see it firsthand with with some of these guys that I, I uh, train alongside with. Zach, hi Archie. Is there any challenges in training for an opponent that hasn't fought in over a year? Um, I don't think so. No. Uh, you know, it, it might if like if you looked at past performances and you saw a bunch of kind of like different performances and different styles in each fight. But you know, through the last four fights that I've watched by him. Um, his, his style, his, his fighting, uh, has always been pretty much the same. So, um, not having been active, I don't think, uh, anything would have really changed. Uh, maybe he's probably gotten better in some things for sure, but I don't think like in the heat of the moment when, when you get punched and, and it's hot and, and everyone's around watching you, you're going to revert back to what you know. And he's shown that. Santiago. Hi, Archie. Thank you for the time. Two short questions. Your last fight ended quite quickly against Jesse Hanam. And that was a short notice fight because you were actually scheduled to fight Justin Montalvo on that night. Why? I'm sorry, are you happy that the company got this fight rebooked? Because this is your second camp for him, right? Um, yeah, like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that the, the promotion got uh, the Justin Montalvo rebooked. Um, you know, after my last fight, I asked for, for uh, Queely or Paulo really got a different fight in in uh, Dublin, um, and you know I got Montalvo, so I, I'm I'm happy with what I got. Um, but maybe we'll still ask for that other one. You had two fights in Eagle, but now you are here for your third fight in a row at Bellator. Are you happy here? And did you recently sign a new contract with Bellator? Uh, I have not re-signed a new contract, no. But this is my third fight. I I figure between third and fourth or. I don't really exactly know how that works, but I think between your third and fourth fight is typically when some sort of talk happens. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but I'm very happy here. I have my eyes on that world title. Um, and I want to conti uh, continue to climb the ranks and, and get to the top of, of Bellator. Cannot wait to see you perform again. Good luck on fight night, sir. Thank you, sir. Last one here, Aaron. Uh, hi, Archie. It's Aaron East from MMA UK News. Um, I just have one quick question for you. Are you approaching this bout differently, seeing as one of your O's have to go? No. Like, I think it's cool. I think it's a cool, like, way to kind of, like, 
see two young, hungry prospects. I don't think you get to see that all, all that often right now um, until people are like 15 and 0 and 15 and 0 or something like that. But people that are in our position at our point in our career, I don't think you get to see that too often. So I'm happy for that. But the, like, if there's like, if you're, the question is something about pressure or something like that, I don't, nah, this is just another fight. I'm going to step out there and I'm going to take his O. Thanks a lot, Archie. Appreciate the time. Thank you guys. We'll be joined next by Randy Field. Call it musical chairs. Oh, I'll kick it off. Let's go. All right, we're now joined by Randy Field. First question. Hi, Randy. You're facing off against Ashley Cummings. What do you make of your opponent? She has more experience than you, but you're a Bellator vet. Do you feel like that's going to be a difference? Uh, I think it's going to be great for her um, to have the experience walking out. I know that nerves could kick my ass anytime, but um, yeah, her experience, I, I really respect it. Um, and I'm just trying to get mine. You're uh, gaining some popularity on social media. I mean, you know, why, why do fist fights anymore? Why not, why not just uh, make some social media content and have an easy life? You're getting punched in the face out there. I mean, I saw you last time in Hawaii. You looked like you had fun, right? Is this fun for you? Is it fun getting in fist fights? Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Actually, to be honest, if I wasn't fighting, I don't know what would happen to people on the streets. So <laughs> it's probably good that they put me in there. How do you finish this fight? Um, I think her and I are going to do very well together. I think that there's going to be a lot of exchange, but I think that I just have too much aggression and too much passion for everything that I've done to get here. Her, her last few fights have gone to decision. I remember you finished your last fight with a rear naked choke. Do you finish this fight or do you think the way you two match up, her style might take you to the final bell? I think I'm going to finish this fight. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Randy. So quick question for you. Um, how have you felt coming off your last performance, your last win and uh, going into this fight? How was everything in the, in the gym? Um, I've had a lot of time. Uh, it's been about a year since I fought. So I've had a lot of time to go back to the drawing board and really work on the things that um, I've been lacking in my game, which um, mostly I would say is um, mental, actually. So um, I'm able to um, accept my coach's criticism and just become a better fighter. Awesome. And I got a text message from my friend, Dylan Rush, who's actually out in the hallway. He had a question for you. Um, first, since April 2022, do you want to become more active this year and maybe fight two more times after this? Absolutely. That would be awesome. Awesome. Once, and once he had one more question for you. Um, is there part of you that wants to get that fight with um, Anaba back? Yeah, there is. I feel like I'm in a totally different headspace than I was then. I had a two-year layoff and I came off uh, elbow surgery. So I was not my best self. Thank you. Santiago. Hi, Randy. Thank you for the time. You were supposed to fight on the last Bellator card of 2022 in December, but the fight got canceled. Are you happy that the company was able to give you a new fight this soon again? Yeah, I'm very happy. Um, that really sucked that that got canceled, but it's okay. We're here. Yeah, and I had James Lynch from Canada on my preview show a couple of days. And he said he was going to do an interview with you. You know, James is always supporting his fellow Canadian people and fighters. And Randy, why hasn't Bellator visited Canada in such a long while? I don't know, but I can ask that question and get back to you. Where are you? This person? I'm virtually. So I'm in Amsterdam, <laughs> very far away from you. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hi, hello to you as well. And... Just a one last question, Randy. This fight of yours is at a catch weight, 120 pounds. Your opponent used to fight at 105, if my information is correct. But I wanted to circle this back to you, Randy, because my question is, are you also able to make 115 straw weight in the future? And do you think Bellator should open up that division? I would love if Bellator opened up that division. I usually fight at 115. And um, my only problem making 105 is this. So... <laughs> That is why I am not an atom weight fighter. 
I get that. You look in amazing shape. Cannot wait to see you perform again. Good luck on Fight Night, Randy. Thank you. Zach. <laughs> Hi, Randy. As Ashley is a smaller opponent, as she's fought in smaller weight class before, how do you think your advantage of weight will uh, impact this fight? I just think I'm going to be stronger. And with my aggression, that is, that's, uh, that's scary. All right, we'll go to Darren. Thank you for your time, Randy. When you have control of the jukebox during training or the speakers, what music is playing? I really like my oldies rock. Um, man, I can't get Celine Dion off my radio. I don't know why, but I refuse to walk out to Celine Dion, I promise. But that's what I've been listening to. I'm really grateful to be here. Well, to Marty. Hi, Randy. Greetings from the UK. Um, how do you see this fight playing and what's your prediction for it? Hello, Marty. Um, I think that I am going to finish this fight. And uh, we're going to just say round two. Brilliant. All the best for this weekend. Thank you. Go to Patrick. Hi, hey, Randy. This is Patrick McCoy from Combat Sports UK. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you for asking. I hope you're well, too. I am. Uh, Canadian MMA recently has really boomed across a lot of promotions. So how long until Bellator comes back to Canada? They haven't been back in Canada since Bellator 79. You know, is that, does that interest you? If you win here, is that what you're going to try and push for? Uh, that would be something that's amazing. Um, I honestly, I'm just here for whatever they want. If they want to come to Canada, I am all for it. And I will be the main event. All right, we'll take our last question here from Danny. Hey, Randy. Um, so you made your debut for Bellator at 125. Now you've had a you're gonna have a couple catch weights now at 120. So is that the goal to eventually drop to 115 and hope that Bellator uh, opens up a strawweight division? Absolutely, I would love to fight at 115. Yeah. Um, do you just think you're like better suited for the weight class for those that have seen you fight before at 125? Do you feel like you're just uh, your potential is much higher at 115 than it is in other division? Yes, and I also find the training camps to be less stressful. Um, when I'm fighting at 125, I'm always constantly trying to gain weight, and then I'll go and take a run or take a poop, and then it's like I'm just back at square one. So, um, yeah, 115 is definitely um, – I'm, I'm very good at it, and I'm very, very strong for the division. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Last one, Kate. Hey, Randy. How's it going? Uh you know, you've had a year off and what, what improvements have you been able to make in that year off in the gym and how eager are you to show those improvements on, on Friday? Uh, just my understanding of MMA. Um, I watched some of my other fights and just some of the mistakes that I made. I'm really able to go back and really critique myself. So once I'm able to do that and look at my own mistakes, I feel like I'm able just to become a better fighter. So in this time, we've traveled out to Houston, Texas, where we t uh, train with Bob Perez. And um, he just speaks my language, and he's really, really helped me to um, understand the game. Thanks a lot, Randy. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Done? Yep. <laughs> we'll be joined next by Lucas Brennan. I gotta ask this bullshit question from the publication for this, but then I'll ask. What's up, Lucas? Doing. All right, we're now joined by Lucas Brennan. We're good. Yep. Yeah. What's up, Lucas? How you doing? How you doing, man? Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, you're ranked number 10 in the division stacked with a lot of experienced fighters, none of them having less than 12 professional fights. And then you have guys like Pitbull at the top and Weichel with over 40 fights. How do you feel like you stack up against those ranked above you in the division? Uh, you know, I'm 
appreciative to be, you know, in, the, in that line of guys, you know, those are guys I, I grew up watching, uh, you know, it truly wasn't all that long ago, but, uh, uh, I mean, I, I'm excited to get in there with them at some point in time, you know, but I'm also, I've said this before and I think those words went overlooked, but I, I'm in no rush, you know, to, to go anywhere. Uh, I'm happy getting fights, you know, as, as cool as it is to be the only undefeated guy in the rankings and the youngest guy in the organization to be ranked, uh, you know, I think it's also like, you know, I, I like getting fights in, you know, I, I got single digit wins as cool as it is to have no losses, you know? So, uh, I think it's awesome. I, th I think it's cool to be recognized in that, uh, group of athletes. You know, they're all fantastic, you know, and I have a ton of respect for all of them, but, uh, you know, I'm just appreciative to be there. Anybody would be happy to be in the rankings, but would you agree that it came as a, l a little bit of a surprise? Uh, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I, I was in no no rush to be there. You know, I'm just I'm just happy getting fights in. I'm just I'm just happy fighting guys. And uh, you know, as as much as I've been undefeated and, and I've won all my fights, you know, I've got you know, you want to add amateur, I got ten fights. You know, I might have I got four hundred plus wrestling matches, jiu jitsu matches, but you know, I, I got ten fights. So uh, you know, I like getting more fights in and more fights in. It's definitely something I didn't expect until. Uh, maybe something a little more like this year, you know, maybe a little, just a tad longer, another fight or so. Uh, but, you know, I'm not complaining. Speaking of expectations, are you expecting cheers when you walk out? You're, you're uh, fighting a guy named Josh San Diego, very close to San Diego. Yeah. So I'm happy to find out he's not from San Diego. I was like, oh, I'm so screwed. Like there's <laughs> no way anybody cheers for me. Uh, but he's, he's from like San Jose or something. It's not even real. I was like, oh, we're fine. We're good. So, uh, as long as we're not fighting in Connecticut again, I'm stoked. So yeah. would you rather be cheered in Connecticut or booed in California? I don't know if I'm, am I allowed to curse? Yes. Fuck, fuck Connecticut, bro. I hate that state so much and I'm doubling down on it, bro. I think, I think the UK blew a 13 to one lead and I think they should have kept Connecticut. I hate that place so much. <laughs> I'm so over fighting there. I'm so happy to be somewhere else, bro. I, I was born like 15 minutes from here. Like I'm, I'm so happy to be uh, somewhere else. I might get booed a little bit, but like, fuck it. Like it's not even, I don't thrive off that. So whatever. Thank you, man. We'll take our next question from Connecticut's Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i i personally I, you know i can understand where you're coming from uh you know you're you're from out here it's okay hey, um are you just for me dog <laughs> <laughs> so um one thing i will say though i have been there for some of your best performances inside of that mohegan sun casino and I've always thought that you were one of the most exciting fighters, especially with some of your submissions that you're able to just pull out of almost nowhere. Talk to me a little bit, a little bit about how that stuff happens and how hard you train to be capable of, you know, putting guys in those positions in, you know, in no time. You know, it's um, years and years of, of this stuff, you know, it's, it's I've, I'm, halfway right now to my second stripe on my black belt, you know, in jujitsu, you know, I've been wrestling a long time and it's, uh, it's something that I'm no longer actively, you know, I'm going to put this guy in a submission. Sometimes I just let him, sometimes I make throw mistakes. You know, I, there's some guys that have put themselves in those positions, you know, um, they just posted a clip of me fighting, uh, Skibiki, um, two fights ago in Connecticut. And, uh, like he put himself in a position that he shouldn't have put himself into, uh, Lugo was someone who I, I coerced and putting himself into a bad position. You know, those guys, I've never had to muscle them into somewhere they don't want to be. You know, I've, I've given them an opening that they shouldn't have taken, you know, things like that. I've, uh, you know, I've, I've played, I've worked that game. I've, I've fine tuned that game for a very long time. And I think there's aspects of it and there's things that I've worked, I work on at the gym and setups for things I work on at the gym and things I've done for forever that I've never actually been able to put into practice. You know, those things I've, that I've never really uh, seen the light of day outside of my training group, which, you know, I'm cool with that. You know, I'm, I'm cool having uh, secrets here and there, even though they're, to me, they're nothing new to other people. They'd be something that no one's ever seen before. So, um, no, I mean, hard training, you know, hard training. I've been doing jiu-jitsu every day since I was a kid. And uh, it's something that I, I have an understanding of now um, and have had an understanding of. Thank you. Sorry about Connecticut. <laughs> Santiago? Hi, Lucas. Thank you for the time. Is your father the West Side Strangler with you as well? And how important has he been for your preparation to this fight? And is he the main man who orchestrates your fight camps? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. He is my head coach. Um, and yes, yeah, I mean, he's a West Side Strangler, uh, you know, straight out of California here. Uh, but 
Yeah, he orchestrates my camps. He orchestrates everything. He is my coach. And uh, having the experience of someone who fought for so long and fought for so long in the growing blueprint of the sport, you know, he didn't fight in nowadays where things are kind of how they are now. You know, there were no suspensions and things like that. You know, you could fight a couple <laughs> a night. You could fight weekend to weekend. You know, and those, you know, those uh, things were different. You used to be able to show up and ask for a different rule set. You know, there was different, those different things back then. So there's definitely a level of experience there that uh, I don't have and that I am incapable of ever possessing. So, um, you know, it's definitely beneficial um, to my training, to my camp and, and to everything. Yeah, I used to fight in pride, man. That's so awesome. Yeah, I'm a big admirer of your dad and all of your professional fights have come inside the Bellator cage and you finish 90% of them. I have a feeling that the company sees you as you know, a, a big prospect, you have a big future here, just like they build up AJ McKee. I kind of see something similar happening happening with you. Do you feel this as well, Lucas? And are you happy to be here with Bellator? Uh, I'm super happy to be here with Bellator. You know, I, I appreciate everything they've done for me. And, uh, you know, I yeah, I really love being here. And the AJ McKee route is definitely something I've looked at since I was an amateur. You know, I do like that, um, that way of going about things. Um, as As much as I love this, particular fighter i don't like the way he does it fine now i don't like the way he came in uh pico was someone who came in i think with zero fights who was like i'll fight for the belt and then he kind of had a tough you know going about and now he has an awesome career going and he's fantastic and so i really like the aj route you know he fought one of my old teammates actually um but that's definitely the blueprint that we looked at when i was younger and uh definitely the blueprint that i have made my best attempt to stick to uh so far in my career danny segura Lucas, I've I've never been to Connecticut. If you could explain to me why does it suck so much? There's nothing there, bro. Besides Mohegan Sun, and it's just old people melting, right? Like they're just like sewn into the seats, just spending pennies. There's nothing there, bro. And I was like, I was trying to find food for after the weigh-in, you know, anything mainstream. Because it's like you ever a pizza capital of the world, what Chicago? I was just there, bro. Like it's not even and Chicago, I would never talk shit about Chicago. For starters, because if I walked outside, I'd get Swiss cheesed, right? But like, I can't, no, dude, Connecticut, who's going to fight me? It's just old people. It's a, it's a highway to cooler places. There's nothing there. I, whatever. You're, you're cool. But, <laughs> but it's not, I wouldn't ever go back. <laughs> and it's like, dude. And like, so I, I have, I hop the morning of my fights. I have a breakfast sampler, no, no syrup, right? No bacon, pancakes, sausage, eggs, right? A little bit of coffee. I love that shit. All right. There's not a IHOP in the state limits. I have to drive to Massachusetts or I have to drive to New York. And I was like, bro, like, this is the most American breakfast place ever. Dude, it was just like, I was also just sick of being there. I fought there four times. And I kept being locked in the casino and shit. I don't know if you've ever driven from the airport to the casino. It's two hours of just nothing. Like, it's just forest and forgotten dreams and shit. And then the winds and then the Mohegan sun. So it's like, sorry, I'm cursing a lot. Um, I don't know. I just don't like being there. Uh, and at this point, I've already said too much to go back. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind like, of the strategy, right? This is where I'm at now. Uh, I don't know, bro. I think the UK should have kept it. Um, whatever. <laughs> um, and, and I know that you said uh, you don't want to rush uh, and you want to do kind of the AJ McKee route. Um, I, this is a bit of a tough question, but if you can put it maybe in terms of time or even fights, um, how, how long until we see you say with like one of the, the bigger names of the division? Uh, I'd give myself probably like next year or something like that. You know, um, I would, again, I don't put hard numbers on anything. Cause I've tried to do that every year. I've tried to be like, I'm going to get this many fights per year, whatever. And then like a guy drops out, a guy drops out again, day of fight, uh, COVID hits, I get COVID. So I always aim for something and I usually don't necessarily get that number because of, um, extenuating circumstances. So at this point, I'm like, you know, I want to finish out this year. I want to get fights in this year, be healthy. And um, assuming everything's looking great, I'd love to uh, get a crack at someone better next year. But again, it's just the route I'm taking. I'm just continually fighting better and better guys. And uh, I want to stick to that. Yeah. And it sounds like Aaron Pico was a big learning lesson for you, at least the approach to his career at the very beginning, right? Phenomenal fighter, by the way. Yeah, I didn't like his blueprint going into his career. I love him. I think he's awesome. His style is awesome now that he's actually remember that he can wrestle, you know? Um, it's like a fucking truck. No, nah, dude, he's awesome. I love that guy. And um, I watched him wrestle when I was in high school. So, But I do not like how he went into his career originally. I like what he's doing now. 
uh, minus the shoulder shit. But, you know, uh, no, he's awesome. Got it. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks a lot, Lucas. Brother. Sweet. Thank you. We'll be joined next by Aaron Jeffrey. What's up, AJ? Nice. All right, we're now joined by Aaron Jeffrey. Aaron, good to see you, man. Last time I saw you, you had just knocked out Austin Vanderford. And I remember as Austin was walking out, there were fans of his with big signs and they were saying, we still love you, Austin. And he just ghosted right by them. So I wanted to know, is Aaron Jeffrey accepting new fans now? <laughs> always, always accepting new fans. What has life been like since this KO? Uh, are you getting some props now? Are people finally giving you the credit you deserve? Yeah. Um, life is exactly the same and totally different all at the same time. <laughs> uh, I got some more Instagram followers. I got a blue check mark. I'm in the rankings. I guess more people know who I am, but uh, I still do the same shit every day. I just go to the gym and eat and sleep, and that's about it. You you've beaten Andre Petrosky, who's doing pretty well in the UFC right now. Obviously, the knockout over Mr. Van Zant has definitely helped you. Now that you're fighting John Salter, what's the pathway for you to achieve your goals here in Bellator? Do you think this win over a ranked opponent will get you up towards that title? Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, the, the pathway is always the exact same, right? It's just beating whoever's in front of you. Like, no matter who they give me, I just got to win the next fight. Um, this guy's in the top five. So hopefully this one breaks me into the top five. I know the rankings are kind of fucked up, but let, let's see what happens after this. And then, uh, maybe the next one's a title shot. If not, maybe one more. Hey, Aaron over here. Hey man, uh, out of your 13, uh, wins nine have come via KO or TKO. Uh, do you consider, consider yourself a, a uh, power puncher and have any of your training partners in the past ever said anything about your power? Uh, yeah, it's funny. Me and my coach joke about this all the time because, uh, in some of my, my older fights, I always took a long time to finish guys. Uh, and I'm like, I'm definitely a volume puncher in the gym. Um, so everyone kind of considered me like a, a volume puncher, kind of a decision guy. And then we kind of realized like later in my career, like, oh shit, like 75% of my wins are, are all by knockout. So, uh, I, I guess, I don't know. I don't know if it's power or, or what it is, but, uh, yeah, a lot of wins are, are by KO. So you could say that. Uh, last question for me. Um, have you ever become a friend of somebody that you fought out of your 16 professional fights? Yeah, a few guys. Uh, Sean Brady, me and him have stayed in touch over the years. Um, Brendan Allen, I would actually consider him a pretty good friend now. I go down to Florida and train at Kill Cliff, so, so me and him uh, can hang out a bunch. Um, I trained with uh, Petrovsky once after that fight. He's a good guy too, so yeah, for sure. Zach? Hey Aaron, I talked to you last week and we talked about how you had the extra training time. How do you think that would play a factor in this fight? Um, yeah, like, like I've mentioned before, uh, extra training time can be kind of a double-edged sword. It gives you more time to kind of think and stew about the fight and it becomes mentally exhausting at some point, but at the same time, uh, it's more time to improve as a fighter, uh, which I think I've done a lot. I've had quite a bit of time off since my last fight and uh, I think I've made some big improvements to my game um so i'm ready to go nice and you also mentioned how your friends with brennan allen and sean brady how important is it for you not to keep grudges since they beat you um i don't know how important it is i i think everyone's different i i know some guys that i've met in the gym that uh that hate pretty much every opponent they've had and especially guys they've lost to uh, and they always want the rematch and that probably drives them a little bit um but for me like with brendan allen specifically uh he's like a top 15 ufc fighter 
Um, he's, he's a phenomenal fighter. So there's no reason for me to hold a grudge and miss an opportunity to train with someone like that. Mills. Hey, how's it going? MMA locker room, part of Puff Sports Radio. How are we doing, Mr. Night? Night, sleep, sleep. I'm good, man. How are you? Good, man. I just want to say, man, I love everything you're doing to keep uh, Elias Theodorus' name alive. You know, uh, I love your foundation that you got going with that. I do believe, you know, after a win over John Salters, you would be pretty much uh, fighting for that title one fight away. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I agree, man. That's that's the question I keep getting asked. So I guess it's it's on everyone's mind. Um, I I haven't brought it up too much, but everyone else keeps doing it. So I, I guess I'm in the title picture. Jacob. Santiago. Hi, Aaron. Thank you for the time. You are on a nice roll here in Bellator with two finishes. And now the company has matched you up with John Salter. And a lot of guys have been getting title shots after they beat Salter. What was your first reaction when Bellator approached you with this fight? Uh, I love this fight, man. Um, he's ranked above me, which is, it's obviously the most important thing is just to to work your way up, right? So getting someone ranked above me is good. Um, and stylistically, I think it's a sick matchup for me. Um, I, I do very well against grapplers. Uh, so yeah, I, I like this fight a lot. Aaron? Uh, hi, mate. It's uh, Aaron H from MMA UK News. Right, um, just have a quick question for you. <clears throat> what's, what's success on Friday will make it a hat trick of victories for you under the Bellator banner. But where do you see yourself on the roster within the next year? Um, well, I got a, a big contract with Bellator. I got six more fights to fight out. So uh, um, I, I plan to be with them long term and, and keep winning fights. And uh, let's say this time next year, I'm the Bellator middleweight champ. Marty? Hi, Aaron. Greeting from the UK. Um, coming off, obviously, three fight win streak now. That mega win against Austin Van der Ford. Is there any pressure now that we're reaching the, the higher echelons of the division? Not any more than there usually is. Uh, I think every fighter kind of says the same thing. Like, the next fight's always the biggest fight of your career. Um, whether it's, like, your your pro debut or regional scene shit or your Bellator debut, or you're finally breaking your way into the top 10, top five title shot, whatever it is. Um, every, every fight is, is the biggest fight of your career. So uh, you, you just got to be ready for the next fight. Darren. Aaron, thank you for taking the time. A few years ago, you published an academic paper that a lot of people found interesting and inspiring. Has anyone from Bellator read it and or thanked you for your contributions to the world of science? Uh, no, I, I don't know. I've, I've never been spoken to about it by anyone from Bellator, but maybe we need to, uh, print off some copies of this paper and, and hand them out at a, a staff meeting or something. All right. We'll try Jacob again. Hey Aaron. Um, ideally how many fights would you like to have this year? Uh, three minimum. I, I think four would be perfect. Okay. And then. You know, a lot of people are asking about like a title shot. And then some people would also say that you took the long road to get here, but then it's been a quick rise in Bellator. So you're kind of in that position where you could almost take like a year to build your name a little bit more, or you can go straight for the title. Um, have you thought about like both sides and which one sounds better to you? Yeah. Um, I've said this before in a bunch of interviews too. It's, uh, it's the overnight success that was actually 12 years in the making. Like I, I planned to be at this point in my career. Um, I just didn't expect it to to take so long, but then all of a sudden happened very quickly all at the same time. Um, I mean, the the position I'm in now, uh, I don't have a choice. I'm I'm in the top ten. I'm going to be in the top five soon. So, uh, um, I guess uh, trial by fire or whatever they say. Last one here. What's up, Aaron? Oh, man. We just learned another promotion is heading back to Canada soon. Do you want to see Bellator return for an event in your native land? And if so, would you entertain a fight with Tommy Theo Karras? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think uh, I think Bellator should definitely come back to Canada. Hopefully that other promotion coming back to Canada kind of breaks the ice and, and shows some other promotions that it's possible to come back. Um, who Who's the guy that you mentioned? Tom Bomb. I no. don't know. I don't know him. Just some dude. Uh, I had the pleasure of speaking to Aero Hawani about you a few months back. He had nothing but great things to say about you. What does it mean? I know I saw you on the show, of course. 
What does it mean to you to receive such high praise from a fellow Canadian with prestigious status like Ariel's? Yeah, it's it's sick, man. It's very cool. Um, I watched the show uh, pretty much from from day one. I used to watch like every the MMA hour with Ariel. So it's it's very cool to to get on there not once but twice now uh, and and stay in touch with Ariel and have him shoot me some texts every once in a while. It's pretty cool. And lastly, I have a Goisman inspired question. So if you don't like it, you know how to fire. Uh, what's one meal? That, I know you're a nutritionist, so one meal to sustain you for the rest of your life. If you could only eat one thing the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, sunny side up eggs and toast. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate the time. Thanks, guys. Fire him. Be joined next by Lance Gibson, Jr. Thank you. All right, we're now joined by Lance Gibson Jr. First question in the room. I can always count on you having the dope Ken Griffey Jr. merch, man. You're a big fan, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Born in Seattle, so. Born and raised in Seattle, so. Yeah. Big, uh, big fan. I saw you were training alongs alongside some Bellator veterans, Henry Corrales, Dan Moret, among others. What prompted you to go get some work in down at Fight Ready in Arizona? Uh, you know, I mean, working with my dad and Julia since I was a kid, obviously, and and doing most of our camps in Port Moody, BC. Uh, we have a fantastic team at Gibson MMA, but we want to expand and uh, we got a lot more uh, elite wrestling with, with the guys that fight ready and uh, got to really advance our skills. So. so you don't strike me as someone that cares about gambling, but I got to ask you this question. You've been a heavy betting favorite in most, if not all of your past Bellator fights. You're a sizable underdog in this one. Are you happy with the pace that Bellator is pushing you at? And are you happy that you're receiving a little bit of a boost, higher level of competition in this one? Uh, well, first thing I, I would say is uh, I don't think uh, betting odds really mean anything at the end of the day. Uh, it's a fight. So whatever it says on paper doesn't, doesn't mean, uh, necessarily show up in the cage. So my thing is I'm about business and I'm about doing my job and I'm about the physical. So I'm not about the paper. I'm not about the all the other stuff I'm about to go in there and do my job and take them out. So it doesn't matter. I I'm ready to go. Are you hoping that next fight week? I know you're fully focused on this one, but maybe next fight week, Bellator books a dog friendly hotel. That would be awesome. You know, cause uh, Suki was really sad that she couldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah. Good to see you, Lance. Good to see you too, man. My man. Um, so in your last fight, we got to see you fight off of your back. Yep. Very nice submission. Do you anticipate that you may have to fight off of your back again in this fight? And how have you prepared accordingly? You know what? So with this fight, I, I've noticed Tokov, he's uh, taking people down. That's one of his favorite things to do. Uh, and I think I can handle anything in this fight. Like I beat him in, in any position in any facet of the game of mixed martial arts, I destroy them. I have all the skills. I have all the abilities. So at the end of the day, if I'm on my back, I'll submit them or I'll light them up from there and then I'll reverse them. Once I'm on top, I'll light them up as well. Uh, it doesn't really matter if he, if he takes me down, I'll get back up and he'll be dead exhausted. And then I'll, t I'll take him out on my feet. So. I know you said the betting odds don't matter to you, but they'd matter if you go bet, man. Do you oh, want to yeah. win Absolutely. some money? Yeah. Just put something <laughs> down. Absolutely. I bet I, you know, my, all my friends and stuff, they, they do the betting. So uh, they'll, it, I mean, win big money if you bet on Lance fearless. So yeah, thanks. So Lance, as you, one second, sorry. As you talked about just a couple moments ago, you did implement some new training partners and some new, a new gym into your camp uh, for this fight. Talk to me about, you know, how you, how those training partners helped you prepare and uh, the, the new kind of skills or new attributes to your, to your fights or to yourself that you're able to implement now. Uh, you know, I mean, there's so many different names. I can't really name everybody, but obviously Henry Cejudo there, uh, his tactics 
like tactical abilities and his uh, vision in the sport is pretty like you can't compare. It. So getting advice and tips from him literally in the middle of my cage rounds, when I've got fresh guys on me every, every round, uh, that's helped a lot, helped out a lot. Having my dad and Julie on my side in my corner, obviously has helped a lot. Uh, my training partners, uh, Dan Moret. I mean, the guy's walking around, he's a 55 er in Bellator. He walks around at like two Oh five. So like having him wrestle me is, I, I don't think Tokov can even compare to, to his strength and size. So, uh, and obviously my other training partners, Ray waters wrestled at ASU, uh, Austin Clayton wrestled at ASU. Uh, all these guys are monsters. And, uh, I mean, my skills are, my skills were already great. And I think you'll just see another, another advancement into my, into my, uh, all my abilities. All right. And last question during this camp, were you able to take, you know, on, on one of your days where you're done training early, uh, were you able to catch any big fish this past camp? How's the fishing been for you? You know, we were, we were in Arizona, so we didn't get a chance to, I seen a couple lakes that obviously you you're able to fish at, but, uh, you know, I picked up a bow. So the, I I've never, uh, done archery. So it was good. I, I picked up a compound bow and I've been practicing getting set up with that. So it's a whole new avenue of learning and, and it's, a it's going to be a nonstop learning process, but that's what I love about life is, uh, being able to develop and enhance your skills in so many different areas. And I think that translate directly to the sport. And I think that's why I'm going to be one of the greatest. Thank you. We'll take a couple more here. Cade. Hey Lance, how's it going? Great. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Uh, a lot of fighters go to fight ready, uh, big time fighters to prepare for big fights. I've seen a lot of fighters even leave their camps and fight ready is one of the top gyms that they end up at just because of the IQ of Henry Cejudo. Uh, are, is that something that you want to continue to do uh, going forward is training at that gym? Did you take away a lot of things that, that Henry was able to give you that make you say, you know what, maybe, maybe for future camps, I want to fight. I want to train here. Uh, I mean, absolutely. Uh, my home base will always be Gibson MMA. So my team at Port Moody, BC, uh, that's my home base. Uh, I think we'll finish our offer camps and sharpen up our skills at fight ready. And uh, yeah, exactly. Henry's awesome. Uh, both Corrales and uh, Henry Cejudo, uh, but Cejudo's given a lot of advice. So is Corrales. Corrales is in my corner. Almost. I think he is louder than anybody else in my sparring rounds. That guy is louder than anybody else. And he's the most motivating because I could be down with th the third fresh, the third fresh guy in one of my sparring rounds. And uh, he's like, let's go get up. He can't hold you down. Get up. And I, I'm, I'm like, I, I hear it immediately and I'm up on my feet and yeah, he's, he's awesome. So, uh, yeah, it's great. Santiago. Hi Lance. Thank you for the time. It's a big night for Canada with four Canadian fighters scheduled on this card. Can you feel it as well that this is a big night for your country and would it be special for you to fight one day in Canada for Bellator? That'd be great to fight in Canada for Bellator. Uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's been a dream. I, for a while since I've been here. Uh, it's been a dream since uh, Julia Budd was here too as well. So, I mean, if they can make that happen, that'd be dope. There's this lightweight tournament going on right now. There's a big spotlight on your division and you are one of the, or maybe even the biggest prospect coming up in this division. Are you content with the way that the company is building you up towards a place in the rankings? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm taking one step at a time. Uh, I'm ready to go. And uh, I, I just do my job at the end of the day. I, that's what I'm here to do. Uh, I try not to talk a lot. I try to just do my job. So whatever is placed in front of me, I, t I take and I seize the opportunity when it comes. Zach. And you're going into your eighth fight right now and six with the promotion. So where do you feel like you are at your career right now? You know, I'm just getting started. Uh, tend to say it a lot. I'm, I'm just like the fire's just really, really starting to starting to sizzle and starting to burn. So I think, uh, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm here and I'm going to take over. So, uh, it's just a matter of time. Marty. Hey Lance, um, coming into this fight, you look very unfazed, you know, obviously you've done the preparation for the fight against Tokov um, Tokov doesn't phase you. Your nickname is fearless. Fishing doesn't phase you. What does phase you in life? Uh, getting stung by bees. Uh, <laughs> I, we're, we're beekeepers and, uh, 
I always tend to get stung in my face. So that does phase me. I, I try not to let it phase me, but it does phase me because I swell up and look like a freaking monster. But, uh, <laughs> uh, and then, you know, during hunting season, sometimes you don't tag out and you see lots of deer and you don't get an opportunity. So, uh, that phases me for sure. <laughs> but I try not to let it, I try not to take it too personally because obviously it's, it's a, a skill hunting. It's not, you don't just go out there and just tag out and head home. But uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that does phase me a bit and uh, getting stung by bees obviously phases me. And a prediction. Fight prediction? Yeah. I've been saying it uh, the last little bit. Uh, submission will be fantastic. I think I see submission in any position. I, I, I honestly see a fi finish really at the end of the day. Unanimous decision is kind of very, very last case scenario. There is no option. The split decision is not even an option. Majority decision is not an option. Unanimous decision is last case scenario, like 0.00001%. And then TKO, KO, or submission, period. Thanks, Lance. Appreciate the time. Awesome. Thank you, guys. We'll be joined next by Joey Davis. Oh, shoot. You want to come on? Come on. You're like uh, John Morgan, right? Yeah. You're, you're, you're All right. John. We're now being joined yeah, by Joey Davis. Hey, Joey, how you doing? Right over here. Uh, what's up, man? What's up? We haven't seen you in a while, man, since uh, November 2020. How have you been doing? What have you been doing during this time off? Man, just training, um, preparing for, you know, the next opportunity that, you know, that I get. And, um, yeah, just working hard. What do you know about this guy, Jeff Creighton? What makes him a favorable stylistic matchup for yourself? Um, I... I know that he has a couple of losses. I mean, uh, a couple of wins. Um, I know that this is his first time in Bellator. Um, yeah. As I mentioned, it's your first fight week in a while. Is there anything that, does it feel just like it always used to, or is there anything a little bit new to you, or are you just right back into it? Um, yeah, just, you know, right back into it. Nothing, nothing really change it's just sub that um I, you know i just got a lot a lot better thank you man you're over at body shop with aj mckee getting working with all those savages what's training camp been like being around all those guys are they in the gym working with you for this one yeah um a lot of new faces you know a lot of young prospects and um that's just young and, and ready and, um, you know, me being around that, getting the, getting, getting that type of training with guys that's just, you know, really hungry and want to succeed in MMA, uh, it just made me, you know, work that much harder. And um, I had to push myself um, each and every day and make sure that I got my butt in the gym, even on the days that I didn't want to go. So, um, yeah, this camp was extremely, you know, different, you know, um, just the way that, you know, I had to push myself, you know, I had to get it going on and, and, it, and it was a, a lot of tough days that you know you know how you have some days where you're just like man uh can I sit down today you know uh, what, do I gotta get up today you know but you gotta push through those days you gotta make sure that you know you just keep keep on your goals and um and 
Yeah, being on Team Body Shop, you got to make sure that every day you have a goal. Team Body Shop is built on MMA royalty, the bloodline of the McKees. But you guys also had wrestling royalty in there with Kennedy Monday was training with you guys. He's gone now. What happened with Kennedy Monday? Did you beat him up in the gym? Um, I, I'm pretty sure he just went back home. Um, yeah, he, he did some training with us and he was doing, you know, really pretty well. And, um, you know, but he had it. He had other stuff going on so that he was pursuing and, uh, you know, maybe, you know, he still contacts us and, and stuff like that, but maybe that he, you know, he will come back, but I, I just know he was into other stuff and, um, and still, you know, wrestling a little bit, helping out, you know, the youth and, and doing things like that. So he was quite busy. That sounded like a lot of love then no beef. Yeah. I mean, he, he's cool. You're eight. No, but you've been out for a while. Do you believe in ring rust? Do you have to overcome anything extra being out for a little bit? Um, you know, it's something that I hear, you know, but I'm just going to have to find out and see, you know, but I, I just know that I put a lot of work into, you know, what I was, what I've been doing and um, just pushing myself, you know, as much as I can possible. And, um, and, and I, I just have to find out and see on Friday, but, you know, I'm still, I'm still young and, and, um, and, and really dangerous. Joey, right here. When I saw AJ back at Bellator 290 in February, he told me that we were in for a treat with your performance. Um, talk to me about what fans can expect come Friday night. Um, just a lot more comfortable. Um, Black Eyes Davis, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, very, very uh, prepared for every situation, you know, um, just been working on, you know, tuning up in the wrestling or just wrestling MMA, you know, making sure that, you know, that I'm throwing strikes when I'm on the bottom, that I'm getting my elbows in there, you know, that I'm just being more selfish in positions in my wrestling for MMA, um, you know, working on a uh, jujitsu defense, you know what I mean? Um, just not making sure I'm getting caught with anything that I shouldn't get caught with. And, and and that was why I took, you know, the time that I did because, you know, earlier on in my career and especially in practices, uh, you know, I had to work on these things and, you know, and, and didn't want to be in a rush or, uh, you know, be in a rush for anything that I'm not, you know, getting myself prepared for. So, you know, I took the time to uh, get better and, and, and get selfish with the training and, uh, making sure that I dig deep and just found out all the things that I really needed to, to work on. And last, last question for you. Um, you know, coming off this year layoff, do you plan to be pretty busy this year now? Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes and, um, and, and what I'll be doing, you know, but, um, I'm just going to take, you know, really this fight, you know, I know that, uh, a lot of people want to see, you know, What's, what's changed with me, you know, how, how the fight's going to go, you know, is he, is he, you know, is, is everything that the gym's been saying, is it true? And, um, so I'm going to just do, do the best I can this fight and, um, get back to, uh, you know, what, what everybody wants, wants to see. This has probably been your longest layoffs from the time you've been to an amateur to a pro. Uh, how is it that you tend to, combat the ring rust or, uh, bounce back from that? Um, just be myself, you know, um, like I, like, like I was saying, uh, over here, I'm, I'm very dangerous. I'm, you know, I'm very hard to beat and, um, you know, going against me, you gotta, you gotta, a lot of challenges to face, you know, you gotta, you gotta worry about, you know, me taking you down. You gotta worry about me being on top. Um, you got to worry about, you know, you know, my athleticism, you know, especially being on my feet, you know, I'm, I'm very hard to hit. Um, and can I be taken down? You know, you know, how, how do we get him rattled? You know, how, how do we get him to be, you know, to, to fit in, 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 in the other person's style, you know, it, I'm always, you know, been so diverse where I'm on, I'm, I'm in control always in my fight. So, you know, if I go out there and be in control, like I am in all my fights, then, um, 
I, I don't believe there'll be, you know, ro- ring rust, but you know, you never, we'll never know until I get there on Friday. You know, it's just something that, you know, a lot of, you know, everybody wants to see, you know, what, what, what is he going to look like? So, and that makes me more excited, you know, and that's just going to bring the best out of me. So uh, I'm just a hundred percent sure that, you know, what everybody will, what, what, what would everybody want to see and what, and what, what I want to do, uh, that my performance should be really well. Thanks a lot, Jay. Oh, good. We'll be joined next by Kat Zingano. Thank you, bro. What's up, Kat? First question in the back. Hello, Kat. It's big fight week here. Uh, I was I was talking to Lee. I was saying I think you two could have been the main event. What do you think? I mean, of course, it would have been fun. You know, I don't know why we weren't the main event, but I think it were definitely that caliber. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Leah was the first woman to headline an MMA, a big MMA event in uh, in Europe, and uh, she's quite a name. But you've been in there with a ton of big names. You got wins over, you know, Misha Tate and Amanda Nunes and Raquel Pennington. Where does Leah McCourt rank up there with the opposition you've seen in the cage? Every fight is different. Every person is good. And, um, you know, styles make matchups. So you really never know. Uh, I don't try to go in with expectations of anyone. I don't try to rate anyone or put anyone on some spectrum. Um, I really have to take every single person seriously in every fight, like it's the fight of my life. And, you know, I'll get the results when, uh, when I get in there. Leah McCourt told us that she's never fought a grappler before. How does that change this fight? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm uh, trying to think if, I've had that experience. Um, you know, I think when you when you think about matchups and you think about uh, people you've gone against or people you haven't gone against, of course, there's, you know, box boxes you need to tick along the way as uh, you move up in your fighting career. I remember first time I fought a stand up person like you just you have no idea what that means. You know, it's a whole different way of thinking. What are they going to bring? What are they going to be able to do? What am I going to be able to do? You know, it's, it's uh, all part of the overthink thing that goes into it. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, on paper, we have a lot of the same strengths. So, you know, it'll come down to whose strengths are stronger that day. You're going to hate this question, but I have to ask it anyway. I saw Chris Cyborg last week. Chris Cyborg says you're ducking her. What's your response? She's not even with the promotion. So I don't know how duck someone she tells me to sign a contract but she doesn't she has two contracts to sign to even get back in the promotion so i feel like she's kind of a crazy lady yelling from the street corner right now just trying to get anyone to talk to her anyone to pay attention to her she's always complaining she always got something negative to say like at this point i just kind of ignore her and you know once those real conversations start happening then we can do something about it but right now it's just noise you know she's noisy My last question for you, Kat, with a win over Leah McCourt, what does that do for you? Where do you go from here? Uh, You know, that's kind of the question. It's, uh, it's, we were both told that this was going to be a title fight. Um, At a certain point, they're saying it's a vacant title fight. And they said it's um, a uh, interim title fight. And now they're like, well, you know what, let's just have it be regular. And then we'll kind of figure it out as it goes and um, see what happens there. So right now, You know, I just got to focus on one fight at a time, one breath at a time, one move at a time and uh, get through the things I have control over. And um, we'll have to see what happens after that. All right, right here, Kat. So I had drew up this question earlier today. Um, after joining Bellator, you've been on a three fight win streak. And I was just wondering, are there any adjustments or were there any adjustments that you made prior to coming to Bellator that you believe to be the key to success? 
Um, one pretty huge adjustment. Um, I know I mentioned it on my social media before, but I was uh, dealing with, I had um, breast implants and I had them removed. I was feeling really sick for quite a while with them and weight issues and um, I don't know, anxiety issues and things like that. And I just kind of, you know, I figured it's just life. Like my life has been kind of crazy and things that I've been through have obviously been work to get through. And I saw someone and I know someone that had a lot of the same complaints and symptoms about their body that I did. And she, you know, was able to figure out that she was basically rejecting and, and allergic to her breast implants. And um, I kind of looked at the things she was going through and it all looked almost the same. So I researched it, I looked it up and there's actually an illness that people can have where they're allergic to the silicone in their implants. Even if they're saline implants, the capsules are um, silicone. And, you know, it was a shot in the dark because it was like, man, I'm going to try this. And if it doesn't work, okay, well, at least I know. But if it works, like, I, I feel like I'm going to be really glad that I did that before my career is over. I don't want to do it after my career is over and find out that it made me feel so much better. And I could have done better in fights and I could have had easier weight cuts and I could have just, you know, thrived so much better. So, you know, uh, in October in 2019, I just committed to doing it. Uh, I found an incredible doctor in uh, Ohio who works on athletes and um, her father was an Olympian. She was an Olympian, now a doctor. And we did the procedure and within hours I saw crazy results. My vision was better. Um, I lost a ton of weight. I mean, just even you look at me now walking around, I just am built differently. I'm, I'm leaner. I don't have that like inflammation to my whole body anymore. I was able to get off uh, antidepressants. I was able to just deal with a huge mess of health issues that just went away over months and months. And to this day, I still see things that I didn't um, know were an issue just kind of fading away. I was allergic to almost every food and I can pretty much eat everything now. And um, so that was a huge thing that got uh, my health a lot back in order. And, you know, I, uh, I really encourage people if they're having unexplained health issues and they have any kind of implant in their body, whether it's, you know, like a, a <laughs> whatever, you know, a, a kneecap or a, a, I saw men in that doctor's office with chin implants or calf implants or whatever, like some people don't, don't deal with them well and they need their bodies reject them and you can't get it tested because it's your own body rejecting you, you know, um, so looking into things like that, it was a life changer for me. I feel like a better athlete. I feel like a healthier person. I feel like I can be a better, more present mother. Like it, it really made a difference in my life to make that change. And it was very vulnerable and very scary, but you know, I, I don't miss it. I don't regret it. And I wouldn't take it back. Awesome. Well, thank you. And going into this camp or going into this fight, how was your camp? How are you feeling this fight week and what can fans expect come Friday night? Um, I feel good. This was a really smooth training camp. Um, you know, I had, uh, I still felt like I had uh, momentum from my last training camp. I, I this took a lot longer to get this fight than I wanted. I was told I would fight before the holidays last year. And, you know, things just kind of kept being postponed, obviously, because of the, you know, the weight class issues with what's next. And, you know, this fight came up, it came up when it came up. So, you know, here we are, but I, I feel like I got to keep some momentum. I stayed training the whole time um, and, you know, just felt fresh and funky and good with all of the things that I got to add and, you know, keep the things that I had going for me really strong. And uh, yeah, overall, it, it was a good camp, a good cut. Um, I'm feeling happy, healthy, strong. I have a good system going, good support group. So here we are. Hey, Kat over here. Hi. Um, I saw on uh, Instagram that for this camp, you've had um, some uh, special training partners, uh, Emily Ducote, Angela Hill, um, et cetera. Um, how was it working with uh, high quality training talent partners just uh, such as that? It's great. I mean, it's great working with the talent um, of all of these girls. A lot of them are a lot smaller than me, so I almost have to give credit to like the beefcakes that were in the gym that aren't on that list as well. You know, so I had um, I had a huge variety of training partners this camp. Um, 
I know that uh, Leah is tall, so I had to bring in some tall people, some tall guys, some tall girls, like, you know, just for um, relevance, you know, just to figure out how, how it all relates. And um, yeah, it was good. It's, it's nice seeing people and being alongside people that work as hard as me. You know, it's a good gauge when you can look around and be like, okay, we're doing this. Okay, if I do a little better than them today, I know I'm doing really good. So um, yeah. It's, uh, it's great being around uh, like-minded people. Sure. Thank you. Uh, my next question. Um, uh, nobody wants to give away game plans, but from what you've seen and been able to study about uh, Leah, like how do you feel your style matches with hers? Um, I, I think my style matches great. <laughs> um, she's from Ireland. Are you going to try to have, have a beer with her after the fight? Uh, you know, I never know how I'm going to feel about opponents after the fight, during the fight, before the fight. Um, I've had experiences where they become my best friend, you know, and I have experiences where I can't stand them, you know. So it, you know, it's it's case by case, you know. We'll see, though. I was hoping this fight would be in Ireland. I will say that. <laughs> Hey, Kat, since you've been a, the trailblazer for women in MMA and how far it's come, what else would you like to see it happen? Oh, what, what else would you like to see happen in women's MMA? Uh, I think it's really, really cool to see uh, women corners and coaches. Um, I really like seeing that because it is a, a different dynamic and it is a really powerful dynamic. I mean, you see a lot of these fights the women's fights are so intense, you know, and a lot of people, I, I even hear a lot of men say they like watching the girls fights the most because of how like wild and like crazy, you know, and, and hard everybody goes and, and, um, you know, that a lot of that does come from your coaches. A lot of that does come from outside of the box thinking and, and new thinking. So I, I think that's really cool. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I have a lot of answers for this, but I can't think of all of them right now. This is <laughs> conversations I've definitely had though. Last question. It's going to be a simple one um, because you have such a great jujitsu um, background and training. Possibly seeing you go to the ground and see some jujitsu in your match. I mean, I don't know that I've had. Uh, I have had a fight that didn't go to the ground much um, before, but yeah, I, I'd be surprised if we don't go to the ground. But at the same time, you don't know what two grapplers are going to try to do. So um, we'll just have to see. Thank you, Santiago. Hi, Kat. Thank you for the time and good to see you back healthy again after nine months. You always post a lot of training footage of yourself in the pool. Is swimming a big part of your fight camp? Um, yeah, it's it has been for the last few and it's been really, really fun. Um, you know, it, it really shows you a lot about what you can get through with just your mind. And when I started this swimming program, I could swim down the pool underwater on one breath and I could hold my breath for a minute. And I thought that was like incredible. And now I can swim 60 meters underwater on one breath, no fins, and um, maybe a little over 60 meters. And I can hold my breath four minutes and 20 seconds. And a lot of that is just me telling myself, I have five more seconds. I have five more seconds. And just knowing what your body does and getting used to what your body does and being like, okay, I get like this when things are hard. And I get like this when things are tough. And, you know, just being present and seeing it through and um, just observing, you know, until you know it's time and then you, know, you come up. So pushing that and doing it in a safe way where, you know, you have support and you have people that are watching your back. And, um, it's, it was honestly one of the favorite things that I had to look forward to as far as my training week because it was different. And every practice I do was hard, but it was hard in a way that the others weren't. And it was fun and it was creative and you got to play and it kind of brought me back to being a kid in a pool. And um, yeah, it was an integral part of the camp, I think, for sure. Really happy to hear that you're healthy again. I cannot wait to see you perform again. Good luck on Fight Night, Cat. Zach? Hi, Kat. You're the much experienced fighter in this fight. So how do you think your experience will play a factor? Um, you know, I, I, I really can't say, you know, everybody comes in with different things to offer throughout their career. And, um, you know, I, I can't, I can't speak for her and how she's going to do. I can't, I, all I can say is I came ready and I trained hard and, um, I treat every fight like it's, you know, moment by moment, kick by kick, punch by punch, shot by shot. And, uh, I, I just got to stay present like that. 
No, that's where it goes. Mills? MMA locker room here, part of Puff Sports Radio. How's it going, Cat? All right, so I just have a question. So you spent your whole time pretty much fighting in an organization uh, with the UFC, with owners and, and you know, comp- uh, conspirators like Dana White. How has Scott Coker treated you over here at this uh, Bellator stage and gave you the platform to pretty much advertise all your sponsors and just have the freedom as a fighter at this point in your career? Um, coming over to Bellator with the really deep division at 145 is really cool. I, I like that this size of women has been promoted and, and uh, you know, nurtured as far as uh, this promotion goes. Um, I really haven't interacted with Scott much. Uh, I think I've met him once. Um, and yeah, uh, for the most part, it's, it's, it's been different in that Bellator is a bit more relaxed than the UFC. Um, and, you know, there are some perks and benefits that, you know, make fighting a lot easier over here uh, as far as, you know, getting paid better and just being supported more and things like that. Um, and, you know, overall, it's been a positive change. It's been a good thing, and uh, I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Kat. That's it. All right, we're now being joined by Daniel James. What's up, Daniel? How you doing, man? Hey, what's up? <laughs> I'm good, man. Uh, I like the shirt, Muhammad Ali. Ready to sell to do it. Uh, you're fighting Marcelo Gold main event. What do you know about him? What makes him a favorable stylistic matchup for yourself? Um, and I don't want to sound weird, but I didn't know too much about the guy. We just, I just started watching fight film on him. I know he fought in the UFC a few times. Um, I know he, um, won a few fights on Bellator, maybe two fights on Bellator. We both toured on Bellator. Um, it's, I'm not surprised by anything. I've seen a lot of guys that I fought like Marcella Gomes, no disrespect. It just, I've seen those type of guys before, but a lot of guys haven't seen me, you know, like. I think Marcelo going fight a different. He's fighting a different, a different type of heavyweight. At this point in his life, in his career, we could time travel real quick back to 2014 Bellator 112. You were the first fight of the night. Your first fight with Bellator, the first prelim. You won that fight. If someone told you that nearly a decade l- later in 2023 you'd be not the first fight of the night, the last fight, main eventing a Bellator card in California, how would you react? I think everything happened according to plan. Make it sound like it's prehistoric, though. Like <laughs> I'm young. No, no but uh, uh, no, I just, I just, I think it played out the right way. At the beginning of my career, it was a lot more immaturity. Um, I learned a lot throughout the process. So, you know, at the, at the, you know, in the beginning, it was just like me wondering when was the next fight. Uh, wanting to fight for the major organizations and not understanding that the learning curve. I had a lot to learn. I had a lot, I had a lot to take from the sport. So I just think my time away from, um, you know, being here in the U.S. and fighting for Bellator was 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 a good thing, because I got a chance to develop. Because I was learning as I went on. I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know shit about MMA. I, you know, when I started training, I just learned how to fight, I learned to become more skillful. And then when Bellator called me back. I feel like it's the right time and the right moment for everything. I feel like I arrived. I've been to like ten Bellator events. I think. The loudest pop I ever heard was when you won, when you defeated Tyrell last, what was it, November in Chicago? Get it right, baby. No villain. <laughs> Are you expecting a similar reception in this one, even though we're in California? Are you expecting some cheers? Well, you know, I'm expecting, um, I'm expecting to come in and um, me, coaches, to do what we do, execute the game plan. Um, 
and remain victorious. You know what I'm saying? So whatever the crowd do, they do. Mm -hmm. They'll do it in a, in a good manner, though. And then lastly, I got to ask about my good friend, uh, Commander Dale Brown. He seemed, Detroit Dust, he seems to be under the impression that you learned a couple things from him. Would you agree with that? You know what? The, um, the, the nose thing, I'm not going to lie. I'm, you know, I'll get due the credit. Like, I literally was in a position in a, in a choke, and um, I reached back, and um, I heard Coach saying, wrist control, stick in there. And then I was like, you know what? I'm a wrist control. Pull my hand, I felt something poking up. I'm like, it's a nose. So I just pushed it back. And, and I looked at the video, I'm like, damn, I actually did that with dude. Uh, what I learned in the hallway, and I was in a panic situation. So I guess I guess it it, it worked out. That's exactly what he told me. Just the way you said it. That's exactly what he said to me. Like, so I'm like, damn, I I was just in a position like, let me just touch something. I got long wounds. So I guess that's what happened. Thank you, man. Daniel James, how are you on Fight Week when you're headlining, my man? And I feel great. I feel great. Fight Week headlining main event. You don't get no better than this right now. Stoked. You, you you look like you're wearing it well. When when you were on my show, we talked a little bit about what your goals are. I want all the media to hear it, okay? So with a win over Marcelo Golm, what does Daniel James want to accomplish here in Bellator? And to be honest, man, it's just, I'm done saying it. Um, we all know where it should be. Um, I understand Lynn Vassell got the title shot after this, but you know, two sellout shows, like, company need to realize what they're doing. Like, stop waiting. Just let me go to the title shot now. No disrespect to Lynn Vassell. I'll take him on or whoever. But the thing is, my target right now is Ryan Bader and Lynn Vassell. Both of them in those waters. But, you know, two sold-out shows, man. The big man on campus right now. Like, the the the, 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 the team need to be, in the, be on alert. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a new shirt for town. The band is, you know, my band is here. We in town. We ready to play. You feel me? So, like... This win tonight should get me towards the title shot, you know. Uh, they got to get somebody to boot, give them the boot. But I'm I'm willing to wait my time, but I'm not going to I'm not willing to wait too long. I think the best decision right now, a money move, is to let Dane James fight Chicago June 16th for the world title. You stole my next question. You noticed they put that Chicago event down. Yeah, they couldn't wait. They planned. They teasing themselves. Like <laughs> the thing is, stop waiting. Like I'm going out. To, I'm going out Friday night. And um, me and coaches, we gonna train really, really hard. So I'm not gonna sit up here and act like I'm the best fighter in the world or um, the best heavyweight on the planet. But you know, when I'm in a fight, I'm in the cage. I come to do what I do, and I leave it all in the cage. And on um, Friday night, man, we here to put on the show. We ain't come to play no games for nobody. So they need to not take this lightly. Like we come to show out, and we only here for one thing with Bellator. So we come to get the strap, and you know. And, and do what we do. Like, we're not trying to hang around. We're trying to get the strap, win, knock people down. And when we're ready to give it up, we'll give it up. You've always been a big, powerful athlete. You've always been able to sell so many tickets in Chicago. The charity work you do. I mean, you could go on and on for the reasons why you have so much support in your home city. Seeing that June event, does that make you want to let your hands go in this fight, get a first-round knockout so you got no damage and you move on to June? Does that make you want to finish this fight? I'm trying to stay pretty as possible. I'm trying, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to stay pretty as possible, but the thing is... <clears throat> I want to get in the fight, get it over early. But, you know, I'm, I'm I'm not the guy to go out and say, I'm going to just, I want to get it over with super early. But, like, this is the first time I think, uh, I can honestly say my coaches even heard me say, I want to go and get it over with just like that. I need a full training camp. Um, I'm ready to get it over with, get over with, pass in a hurry, and um, take a few days off and go back to training and get ready, and, and get ready for June. Like, that's going to be a sellout crowd. So soon they announce that. People need to get their tickets today. So my face going to fly. Hey, Dan, right here. So right now you're riding a four fight win streak with some impressive performances, some big wins uh, before that. Well, before that four uh, uh, fight win streak started, were there any uh, changes that you made to training or anything that you did to uh, that you blame for this, you know, success? Um, I have no regrets on anything that I've done within the sport life, but, um, especially in a sport, um, um, I checked that the regrets at the door. I just feel like that, um, it was times in my career that, um, I had to really understand that like 
I don't have the green light, uh, you're not always going to be the man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I played sports all my life, always been up front. You know what I'm saying? So I had to accept the fact that this is a whole new lane for me. And it's people that's been doing this since they was 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, and they have a big learning experience. And I say, I'm coming into this game at the age of 20-some years old, you know, and I'm coming in trying to be an amateur at the age of 28, you know. So I had a lot of crash, a crash course with this. So um, when I disappeared a little bit, I just took it for what it was. I just said, let me just take my time and learn. Don't blame nobody else for your failures but yourself. And that's how I got better. I just fall through everything. And do you believe that this four fight win streak is kind of your hot streak? This is the this is the streak that's going to be the one to get you to the title. And you know, this is your run right here. Is this is that what you think? Yeah, I'm done. Like I, I'm. I'm not, I'm not trying to sound arrogant or cocky or anything. That's not me at all. You know what I'm saying? But like, I'm. It's no more losing. It it can't be. You know. I can. You know. I just gotta. If I execute and do what I've been taught and what I've been trained, you know, like there's no way I should be able to lose a fight at this point in my career. You know, I'm on a four fight winning streak. I fought, I fought the best and I fought some of the toughest in the world. And you know, when you go to Russia, you don't go to win. You know, you go to an organization like that, you're bought over there as a feeder. Yep. And to be over there and become top five in the rankings, you know, and then to come back to the USA and fight for Bellator. So it wasn't it wasn't me coming back saying, oh, I'm fighting against the big top guy, Tyrell Fortune. It was just me coming back fighting against a smaller heavyweight, you know, uh, a guy that wrestles. And I just have to make him do what he do and that's wrestle and try to shoot. And he called that hand and that's that's it so it's it's no more it's no more losing right now if i do what i have to do thanks daniel well done all done all right <laughs> Don't pull a Tony Ferguson. Oh. All right, next up, we got Sullivan Colley. Question in the back. What's up, Sullivan? What's up? You finished everybody in the first round. That's a pretty dope stat. Does that continue? Hopefully. <laughs> I mean, I if you look at my interviews leading up to all my fights, I've never been like, yeah, I'm gonna get this guy out of there in the first round. You know what I mean? Um, I just it's just kind of a byproduct of the way I fight. I'm gonna fight how I always fight. I'm real aggressive, real uh, explosive, powerful. So I mean, it wouldn't shock me if uh if you know it's a little tougher fight and it goes three rounds, it wouldn't definitely wouldn't surprise me if I take him out in the first either. Is this the toughest opponent you fought? I mean, you know, Luke Trainer definitely uh, seems to be the closest odds we've seen with you. You had the fight with Big Tuna. I mean, he had some hype for sure. Is this the toughest opposition? Um, yeah, I'd say he's the toughest opposition. Um, but, you know, when you've been knocking everybody out in the first round, that's okay, you know? Ryan Bader said you're pretty good. You, you keeping his ass in the gym? You've been working out with him? I, I have. He, uh... You know, I'm trying to keep him from retiring as long as I, as long as I can, you know. <laughs> For, to be a training partner? To I mean, a, he could switch to yeah, coach, right? To be a training partner. I mean, I think he'll stick around and help out. I don't think he's, like, really going to transition hard into being an MMA coach. You know what I mean? So, um, he's a fantastic training partner and, uh, you know, essentially kind of acts like a coach while he's still fighting. So, I'm hoping that that continues for a while, but I know, you know, maybe three more fights and he's probably going to want to retire. What does a win over Luke trainer do for you? Where do you go for, go from here? Um, I think win over Luke trainer means it's time to start fighting guys in the top 10, you know, um, we, if you talked to us before my you know development and contract fights, we were like really trying to slow roll it and, you know, get as much experience as possible before we jumped up to the tougher opponents. But when you knock everybody out early, uh, it's just hard to do that. You know what I mean? So, you know, I've, they've been kind of pushing me and that's, that's good. Luke's a great opponent. If I beat him, I think that's 
very clear that you know I'm ranked, I'm ranked in the top ten. It's time for me to start fighting guys in the top ten. Pedro has a long way to go, but I don't think he's uh, transitioning into being an MMA coach. It seems like he's transitioning to being a uh, bar and restaurant owner, right, in Scottsdale. Bar and restaurant owner. I think what he really wants to do is be a professional hunter. Yeah. Yeah, more than anything, dude. If he could like live in the woods, I think he would. Is he good enough? He's good. He's good. I've been telling him, he's, he's, he's like, he's got a good personality. He's a funny guy. We need to get him like a hunting show. Have you uh, heard good things about Poor Decisions, his new bar? I have. I mean, I haven't been there because I've been in camp, but I'm looking forward to tearing the place down. It's a good name. Right? It's a good name, right? It's a good name. Yeah. All right. Enough about Bader. Uh, when I came to interview you in uh, Mesa, Arizona a couple weeks ago, I walk in, it's just you and this empty, you know, warehouse power MMA, and then Paulo Costa. I was surprised to see him. What was it like training with him at power and at, uh, and at fight ready? He also went on Instagram and thanked you for all the hard rounds. So what was it like to train with him? It was great, dude. Um, you know, as a big guy, like it can be hard to find other big guys to train with. Um, if you're not at a, one of those giant gyms, especially. So yeah, Paulo coming into town for my first few weeks of camp was was awesome. We got a bunch of tough grappling and like essentially gym fights, you know what I mean, which is super valuable experience for someone like me who's had really short pro fights. Um, you know, it was amazing. I I I would imagine that we're going to continue to do it when he's in the whenever he's in the states cuz we both got some great things out of it. You're keeping the mustache trend. I, the must dude, the mustache train is rolling. <laughs> what about the what about the walkout song trend? Yeah, danger zone. Yeah, danger zone. <laughs> All right. Uh, what about other valuable training experience? You got your guy, Double J, MMA, Jordan Johnson, your wrestling coach. He has that little Fedor body type, as Bader like to call it. How valuable is that nice. experience training with him? Uh, it's huge. You know, he is, a, he is a great MMA wrestler. You know, that's really what he did in his career. Like, you know what I mean? He would just go out there and put it on guys. And he's got a lot of great tricks of the trade and technique that he, you know, shares with me. And it's a great, uh, he's like the perfect compliment on the coaching end to my striking guy, Danny Brandt. Uh, last one or two, who's in your corner for this one? Is Danny going to be here? Yeah, Danny Brandt and Jordan Johnson all day. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yep. I like the new logo. I like the merch you put out for Thanks. this fight. I feel like you definitely didn't design it. You don't seem like a, a merch designer. Who, who was it? Was it Lisa? Um, it was my, my one of my like my, my marketing agent Alex Guerrero. He works with um, you know, uh, basketball players, football players, baseball players, and stuff. And they have a um, they have a company that they essentially like uh, contract this type of stuff with. So we the company like started firing us logos, and we tweaked them and went back and forth. And this is what we arrived at. So I think it's pretty cool. Sullivan right here. Uh, you had, a, as as far as we know, a great camp and you look great um, coming off of, you know, great performances in 2022. How do you feel going into this fight and what can fans expect come Friday night? I feel better than I've ever felt. You know, I just, uh, if you ask my coaches and my training partners, I just keep getting better and better, you know, all the time. So, you know, every little thing's getting better too. My, my weight cut, going smoother you know I'm, I'm big and strong i'm just the perfect size i want to be i'm kicking ass in all my sparring sessions you know i'm feeling more and more confident all the time so i mean i feel great i'm gonna go out and you know all you can do is just fight hard and let the chips fall where they may but i think uh i think i'm gonna take it to the trainer awesome and last question for you do you plan to stay very active of course going into the rest of 2023 and what would you like to come for you or what would you like to see come for you going into the rest of the year yeah i would, I would, I would be happy with getting three fights in this year that's what i did last year and i think that's a good pace it allows you to you know nurse injuries and and make sure your weights and everything's all dialed in in between fights it's, but it's uh you know it's active enough so i would like three fights again this year Hey, what's up, man? Um, you being at uh, Fight Ready, did you uh, have a chance to meet or learn from uh, John Jones or uh, Kelvin Gaslam? I didn't get to train or or meet uh, Jones at all. He was there. He was there for kind of a quick stint. I did train with Kelvin Gaslam though, and uh, we that was nice. We mostly wrestled, and um, he's a great dude. I really liked him. He's one of my best friends. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, next question: uh, What prompted you years ago to get into mixed martial arts? Uh, I, I wanted to get an MMA 
from an early age. You know, I followed the sport, uh, you know, avidly as a kid. My dad introduced me to it. And you know, growing up as a wrestler, seeing all these wrestlers doing great things, it was like, that could be me. And then on top of that, I'm from Reno, Nevada. I saw Ryan Vader crushing it in the UFC. And I was like, that's a Reno boy wrestling college and is killing it in MMA. So that like, I was like, this can be done. And that's what I wanted to do. Thanks, Sully. Is that it? That's it. All right, we're now being joined by Marcelo Gold. First question in the back. What's up, Marcelo? How you doing, man? Uh, third fight with the promotion, 2-0. and Good win streak, four-fight win streak now. Are you happy with the treatment you've received from Bellator? Are you happy with, you know, you're in a main event in your third fight, so what can you say about your relationship with the promotion? Yeah, I'm very happy, man. It's my first main event, so I'm so excited for, for the first main event. And, you know, man, I finished my fights. 10 fights, 10 finishes. The, the belt are like this, yeah? Mm -hmm. The fans like it. I think it. so. The fans like too. Is that a big part of your game? Do you want to show out for the fans? You pride yourself on being an exciting fighter? Yeah, of course. What do you know about this guy, Daniel James? What makes him a good matchup for yourself? Man, he's a strong, you know, good boxing. He's a good fighter. I, I'm very excited for, for this match. Who's going to be in your corner for this one? Uh, Antonio. Conan and Gabriel, my boxing coach. Thank you, man. Marcelo, you're over here in Bellator, and now you got the headliner spot. Has anything been different this week? More media, mentally headlining the card. Do you like this? Yeah, I like this. More media, you know? I don't speak a good English, but I tried my best. Yeah, I like this. Good enough for us. Um, you had a very impressive performance against a real standout guy in Davian Franklin. I went over to Jackson Wink and they were telling me this is the next rising star and you were able to finish him. How do you keep that momentum heading into this fight with another big, strong heavyweight in Daniel James? I put my strategy, you know, I am moving forward. Like uh, in my last fight, they say, hey, this guy, he's strong, you know, good wrestling. I don't care, man. I don't fucking care. I am moving forward like a dog, bro. And that's it. I've been watching Daniel James fight for 10 years. We're both from Chicago, so I've seen him come up from an amateur. The new thing with Daniel James is he believes in his hands now. You watched his last fight. Were you impressed? I'm not impressed. Everybody in this division have a power. You are heavyweights, you know? So I'm not impressive. He's a good fighter, you know? I have a respect for him, but I'm not impressive. It would seem to me that people would give you a jujitsu advantage, but how do you think you match up in the wrestling and the striking against Daniel James? Yeah, I have a good jujitsu, but for this fight, I put my striking, my boxing. I have a better boxing. Marcelo, right here. So with your last win over Davion Franklin, a huge victory as we were just talking about, what did that do for your mindset and your confidence? Yeah, it just, it just solidified. 
Sorry about that. It just solidified that um, he is ready to be a champion and he's ready for main event status. And, you know, he he's ready for basically whatever Bellator throws at him. Awesome. And training at ATT, how has that helped you evolve as a fighter over the years? Man, ATT is a great team. You know, we have uh, the best training partners, the best coaches, especially for this fight. I trained with Sergey Pavlovich and Marcos Pezon. Two good fighters. Sergey, number three. Speaks for itself. Yeah, yeah. So we have a great team, man. This is good. Awesome. And last one, with a win on Friday night, what will go into what will go on for you in the rest of 2023? Is there anything that you'll be looking for after a win here? Yeah. I have this fight first, you know. Uh, I put my attention in this fight. So after this fight, maybe Steve Murray. Why not? He's a number three and number five. Yeah, hi. Um, did you or your coaches at ATT bring in any special sparring partners uh, to emulate Daniel James? Yeah, Sergey Pavlovich helped me a lot, and Marcos Pezon. They helped me for this fight. Thank you. Um, what, and what is your favorite uh, Brazilian food? Ooh. Mine is uh, feijoada. Feijoada, yeah, 100%. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, Marcelo. Next up, we'll have Rustam Kabbalah. All right, we're now joined by Rustam Kabalov. Question in the back. What's up, Rustam? How you doing, man? So this is your first Bellator fight week. How is it? How are you feeling? How's it been? It is good. Everything is okay. Um, I came here like three, three, four days ago. Everything is okay. Uh, you have fought the who's who of MMA. You have fought so many great fighters. Jorge Masvidal, Yancy Medeiros, Benson Henderson, Chris Wade, to name a few. What motivates you at this stage of your career? Are you gunning for the Bellator World Championship? Is that why you're here? Do you want that title? Yes, of course. Um, um, it's, it's, you know, everything is for the belt. It's the dream. Do you know a lot about your opponent? Do you feel that he's a good matchup for yourself? Uh, yes, I watch uh, my opponent's fight. Uh, it's good. He have a uh, good boxing, wrestling, but I'm not bad too. You think you're better? Yes, of course. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Rustam, welcome to Bellator. You like it so far? Thank you, yes. I like. Everything good in California? Yes, everything is good. When did you come in? Uh, like three, four days ago. Is it hard to adjust to the time difference? Uh, you know, is it okay coming on fight week? Would you prefer to come earlier, spend more time in the United States? Uh, United States, I came like three, three weeks before. Yeah, three, three weeks ago. I stay in Las Vegas, make like train camp and uh, adoption. I feel good now, sleep's good. Train good. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a hard when you came from Russia, it's a different time. And I uh, cannot sleep for daytime, wanna sleep like this, yeah. You've had so much UFC experience, so you're very accustomed to getting in that cage, but it's been a while since you fought. This is your first fight since the pandemic, since COVID-19. So do you believe in ring rust? What will you have to overcome to perform at your best? Um, it's, it's not, it's not like, it's not true because, uh, 
three years, I um, yes, I, when, when uh, COVID time is a hard time, but I train all the time, uh, a lot of lift because uh, I change my uh, my weight before I fight 155 and uh, I do a little bit small for the 170. And I make a lot of training for the lifting, you know, and uh, I feel good now. Like uh, normally I have like 93 kilo. I think it's good for 170. Your opponent is Jaleel Willis. He's a very, very slight betting favorite against you, which I thought was interesting having so much experience. Do you think this will be a close fight? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I cannot say now anything about uh, fight because, uh, yes, long time I doesn't fight, uh, but I'm hungry. I do, I I uh, I not wanna like uh, go in cage and stay there wait for my work my opponent no uh, I starting work like first minute you know and uh, I will make him hard fight nine out of your last ten fights have gone to decision nine out of his last ten wins have been decisions can you finish this fight I will try I will try love it thank you. Rustam, how was the training camp, man? Good. Uh, I make good training camp in Russia. The Olympic wrestling guys with the um, good boxing coaches, and and then I I came here in Las Vegas. I make good training camp in uh, Extreme Couture. They have a lot of tough fighters. Awesome. And do you plan to, uh, you know, spend a couple years here with Bellator and rack up some fights under the Bellator banner? Um, I don't know. I don't want to say now about what I do for like next two, three years, but uh, now I have a uh, yes, as of right now, I have my opponent, but of course, my goal is always like uh, chasing for the best and the top for the chasing for the gold. Thank I'm sorry you. about my English. I uh, no, no understand problem. everything, but I try to, to speak English. You know. Pretty good, man. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Rustam. Finish. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Last, we'll be joined by John Salter. What up, John? Take our first question in the back. How you doing, John? Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. I like the shirt. Thanks. What do you know about Aaron Jeffrey? What makes him a good stylistic matchup for yourself? Um, you know, I think he's one of those guys that's really good everywhere. People, you know, still try to relate people as being one dimensional and stuff like that. And obviously he's got great Muay Thai, and I think that's probably more of his background, but he's a brown belt in jiu-jitsu, good wrestler. So you know, there's not gonna be an easy spot with him, but I think I'm just uh a little more solid in some areas that'll uh, give him some trouble. This guy kind of came out of nowhere. It's probably not someone that was on your radar for the last year or two. Is this a matchup that really excites you when they sent the contract? You were excited to take this guy on? Yeah, you know, I'm at a point where I'm only fighting top tier guys. So I knew one of those guys was coming. And, um, you know, I, I kind of thought the Vanderford fight might be something that was uh, on the horizon. And when he came and uh, knocked Vanderford out in the first round. It's obviously a guy that looks exciting, looks like somebody you want to test yourself with. And, um, and you know, he's a young up-and-comer, so 
I know I've been in that spot trying to get fights with tough guys, and a lot of times the guys won't take it. So, um, yeah, as soon as they said his name, I said yes. I was, I was uh, pumped to make it happen, and I think it'll be a good fight. So you're currently on a two-fight skid, skid, but albeit against two of the best fighters in the world. Have you made any changes to your training camp or your regimen uh, as you look to get back into the win column? Um, you know, a, a little bit of changes, nothing major. Um, just kind of tweaking some things, you know. Um, I think, uh, you know, with Masasi, I uh, was not fully aware of, of what he was going to be offering. Um, so, you know, I think that's something that I've had to make a little bit of a, a change on. And then, um, you know, our uh, injury early on in the fight against Evelyn just put me in a spot with a guy like that. I really, not much I could do except survive, you know. So, um, I think that, uh, yeah, I'm still who I was. I'm going to be doing the same thing I've always done and uh, just trying to get better everywhere. Yeah, no problem. John, you're very experienced. You certainly bring that into this fight, but the bookies are giving uh, giving uh, your opponent, Aaron Jeffrey, a four to one favorite. I thought that that surprised me. Is it surprising you how much you're being sort of underrated in this matchup? Um, yeah, I don't ever look at that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it seems absurd, but you know, that's what it is. People in my last fight, I had a really, uh, I think poor showing as far as after the first round, I didn't go forward any. So I think a lot of people saw that as, oh, I'm not, not who I used to be or something like that. Um, I got hurt pretty early in that fight and then it was just a matter of, I don't want to get, get put away. So, you know, I can't be really aggressive. And I think that's, uh, I think that made a little, I mean, even my dad afterwards was like, I don't think you need to do this anymore until I told him, you know, that, what happened and he's like oh, okay well then never mind that's that's not who you were um so i think people look at that and see me as thinking that a year ago i wasn't the fighter that i have been in the past you know are you who you used to be i think so i hope all my training partners say that um you know i i still i don't i haven't changed up my regimen i don't train less uh you know this is actually probably the, one of the healthiest camps i've come through um so i think uh I think I'm uh, as good, if not better, than I've ever been. I, I hope I'm better. I've had a year to work on it and get better. On Monday, I got to talk to Dalton Hercules Rasta. Dalton Rasta's looking at that nice ranking you've got next to your name. He says he wants to fight you next if you get a win here. What's your response? That's a real classy fella. Um, no, I, uh, man, we, we actually, I got offered him uh, this summer, and I, uh, I hurt my back, and all I could do was kickbox. I couldn't really um wrestle or anything like that and uh i wanted to take that fight really badly um and my manager and my coach had told me no you know that i wasn't i wasn't at a point that i could fight somebody so uh that's obviously one that we've been matched up before so i would expect that to be coming for sure yep no problem hey john uh what was it like working with uh former ufc light heavyweight champion chris weidman for this camp um great uh i Man, he, uh, I, when I was getting ready to fight Masasi, he was supposed to be coming back from uh, his fight. And he was like, I'm going to get right back in the gym and help you and everything. And uh, always a great training partner. And then he broke his shin. Um, and uh, so that sucks. Uh, you know, it didn't happen for a while, but he, even when he was hurt, he was in there how much he could help. He's just a, a really good guy and a good teammate. And then to have him in there for this one a lot, um, you know, it's hard to get guys with that kind of, uh, feel and pressure. I've only got a handful of guys that I train with that can feel that way. So adding somebody like him, is, it, it's as big of a blessing as you can get. Yeah. Last question. Um, so for me, uh, martial arts, uh, it gave me the discipline to join the military and, uh, get a, uh, college, uh, degree. What, what stuff outside of fighting has fighting benefited for you? Um, you know, I, I think it's been, it's been a life changer. You know, I wrestled my whole life. I got out of college and it was one of those things that I'm going to go to grad school and I'm going to fight while I'm in grad school. And then, uh, you know, I got to grow up and do something else. So it's the big things. I don't have to grow up, you know, um, now I've got my own business from it, you know, um, and it, it's just been such a big blessing. And, and I've set myself up to where when that time comes that I am done, I've got a way to make a living and, uh, support my family. So it's been huge. Take a couple more here, Zach. John, as you have been out for a while, what have you done in that time to help improve your game? Um, you know, like I said, I, I hurt my back and really not doing anything. I had a really hard training day that everything went well, and I was mopping at the end of practice, and my back just started tightening up. 
Um, so it put me in a spot where I couldn't really wrestle. I can do a little bit of jujitsu, but nothing great, but I was able to, to kickbox. So it really gave me a lot of time just to work on kickboxing. Um, and which is, you know, I, while I think I should have been doing Muay Thai for 16 years now, but to really focus on that for that amount of time that I was dealing with that. And it was a prolonged uh, problem. And I don't want to use the term injury because I was able to train around it. I was able to live my life around it, but it just really limited me from doing the things that I would normally do to train. So it just forced me, even in sparring, I was able to spar, but I'm not able to take anybody down. So I'm just focusing on uh, striking. And I think that really helped me a lot. Um, you know, anytime you train around an injury, you improve the things that uh, you normally wouldn't work on. So I think that's what happened there. Marty? Marty? Last one, Patrick. Hey, John, this is Patrick McCoy from Combat Sports. Okay, how are you doing today? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. You know, it's been a while since you thought. I wanted to ask you, in the time off, I know you've been injured. Did you pick up any new hobbies? I know a lot of MMA fighters love Lego. I don't know if you have anything like that, but have you picked up anything new? Um, you know, I had all this time to uh, fish last year. And, uh, my fishing partner's here in the room with me, and we had the worst weather for uh, the whole summer. <laughs> So, uh, sucked. I was injured. Couldn't do a whole lot, uh, of my work, some of the workouts that I normally do and still couldn't fish. So that's one of my main things. My wife and I've got a mule my wife has a horse. So we try to uh, do that whenever we get some free time, get out and ride. And I've got a two-year-old daughter and she absolutely thinks they're the greatest thing on the planet. So she rides with us. So that, that's another real fun thing that we do. And can we get a final prediction from you as well for this fight? Um, gosh, um, high hopes that it's the first round finish and go home early, but I don't think uh, Aaron's kind of guy I'm going to put away. I think he's going to be a guy that uh, with 10 seconds left in the fight's going to be coming at me hard. So I think it's just going to be a um, pretty hard fight for uh, three rounds. He's he's a finisher. I'm a finisher. So two guys doing that, we're going to stay in each other's face the whole time. We'll try Marty one more time. Hey, John. Um Word from Aaron earlier on, he seemed very confident going into this fight. Um, do you think he might be overlooking you somewhat? Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, I, I don't take him as a guy that would overlook me. That'd be great if uh, that's what he's doing. But I think he's just a confident guy that's trying to climb his way up the ranks and to come in and uh, put away, you know, Austin Vanderford. I think that's going to give anybody a lot of confidence. Uh, but I think I bring a lot more to the table than Austin Vanderford does. Thank you. Call the best of Friday. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thanks, John. Appreciate the time. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, John. You. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. See you on Friday.